on today's episode of the Game Chasers. On this episode of Game Chasers, Star Tropics, maybe? One of my more exciting finds to find something that was forgotten about. For five bucks, I had to have it. Yeah. Uh, dude, I'm like, I'm like super stoked now. I'm not trying to be sexy right now. That's saying something because you, you hang out what? with rednecks. Fuck off, you motherfuckers. I'm super stoked today because we're going to a flea market that we haven't been to in a while. One thing you are not. <laughs> it's sexy. You're really not that sexy, honestly. I mean, don't believe everything Chelsea tells you. Do what? Because you're like the ugliest motherfucker I know. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since we've been here. I uh, don't know what to expect. You know, like everywhere else, I think it's hit or miss. Could be a little dry right now, because it's just been kind of dry in general lately. I gotta become one with the chasing chi and center myself, for I will find the dills. How much is the Barbie? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? You know what pisses me off? when everybody thinks that they have gold in the form of retro video game carts. You know what I mean? All, every one of those were $2 games, Max. Yeah. So we come across the table here, it has uh, some Nintendo 64 games. $10 each, but whatever, nothing I need. I was eyeballing. Do you need a Game Boy? I don't have a Game Boy. I'm kind of curious about it, because it's a Game Boy, I don't have it. How much for the Game Boy? So, <laughs> holy fuck! <laughs> this this fucking bitch, fucking sixty bucks. You gotta be fucking out of your mind. Sixty fucking bucks for a Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been some months since we've been here. Quite a few months, actually. Um, Apparently these motherfuckers went crazy from the last time we were here till now. I, I don't know where this is going. How much for this Madden 94 common is you know? Oh, that'll, that'll be $15. What's the best you can do on it? 12. Oh, get the fuck out of here. This particular flea market, I know two or three years ago, we would find gold every time. But that's just not the case anymore, unfortunately. This fucking bullshit is what it is. PS2 over there? Yeah, relax. It's just a PS2. Meh. PS2. So Billy spies with his stupid blue eye a case on the floor with a bunch of NES games in it. Ooh! What's your games? No, no, no. Five dollars. Five each? Sweet. I love it when I come across a vendor and all their games are a one set price instead of just, oh, I'm looking it up on eBay, right? Because I literally think I have every one of them. I know. I do too. Somebody else want to hold the camera? Yeah. They've already got everything, you know, now it's my turn to look. We're gonna give him that opportunity to kind of let his collection grow a little bit. Some decent titles in here, a bunch of comments with some decent titles. There's always gonna be stuff that I don't have um, for the time being, because like I said, my, my collection's relatively small. Like Dr. Mario, I don't have that. I see a Dr. Mario and I vaguely remember it growing up. I'm, I'm sure that Billy and I played it uh, quite a bit at my my grandmother's, my grandparents' house. How do you not have a Dr. Mario? What's wrong with this I, guy? I haven't been collecting that long. I, I don't come out, I don't, you know? So. For five bucks, you pick up Dr. Mario. That's an eight to ten to twelve dollar game, depending on where you're at, and it's a fun game on top of that. Dr. Mario is a puzzle game. I'm not gonna say it's similar to Tetris. The only way it's similar is you can flip the pills. Um, those are your your pieces or pills, and they're multicolored. You got blue and red, and you got yellow and red, and yellow and blue, and blue and red, and red and red. And anyways, you have germs, and the pills kill the germs. So you got to match up the color of the pill with the color of the germ. Ghost and goblins. The heck. See, I'll get, get that one. Kind of a classic one. Yeah. I can only get like past level three, and I've been playing this game for a while. It's super extremely hard. 
I would say it's one of the top three hardest games on the NES, but it's also a classic. He's gotta get it. He's gotta have it. I don't think I remember playing that one at all, but anything with Ghosts and Goblins, I've gotta pick up. You got keyboard. You got pick what you need. I mean, what, what do you have though so far? Chris finds a Ninja Gaiden. You're, you're guiding him through the city. Oh, here we go, it's Ninja Gaiden. Tomato, tomato. I've, I've gotta get it, five bucks, gotta pick it up, gotta have it. Ninja Gaiden is one of these classic side-scrollers. Um, it, it's a good game, it's very difficult, um, especially once you get into the, the upper levels, you know, level level five and six. It's one of my top 10 games on, on the NES. And I can almost no death run it, just saying. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn or anything, but... Bullshit. Oh, I can. Bullshit. I almost did. No, oh, no, 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 you. What can you hook them up with if they get multiple? I mean, are they still five bucks a piece? Five dollars a piece. Theoretically, you buy more, should come down, right? How about three each of my $20 worth? Guaranteed. No, I mean, I've been, there, there, there's a whole bunch of other guys that come around buying the cassettes, all that right stuff, on. too. But he's not having it. So I got about five, five different people that come, right. you know what I'm saying? So I've been selling a whole bunch for like five dollars. So if he's got four or five people that regularly buy games from him and they're paying five dollars a piece, why would he come down? If all the games are five dollars, it's better than ten dollars, better than fifteen dollars, better than eight dollars a piece, which is kind of the standard these days. When I buy storage units, you know what I'm saying? It's just, this is what comes out of it. It's just the way game chasing go. Track and field worth five bucks. Track and field's not worth five bucks, is it? Track and field? Nah. I mean, you yeah, you got some good selections. Put, put that back, I have that. Dr. Mario? Mario? Yes. I have a double. Grab the, the Bart versus Space Mutants. Bart versus the Space Mutants. Now, this is not a great game. A lot of people can't stand it, but I personally love this game. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Spray people and you know, stop the alien tentacle. The stuff that we played at Grand Grands, you know, I, I probably didn't get to play very much because you you know, Billy was always hogging the fucking NES and the Super Nintendo. Star Tropics, maybe? I've already got Star Tropics. Okay, good deal, good deal. If I can help someone out who doesn't know as much as I do, I'm glad to do it, even if he is a redneck f like Chris. Cubert? I've got Cubert. Okay. If you have Star Tropics, don't get Star Tropics. But for trade bait. Oh, don't worry about trade bait. Get stuff you need first. These three are, I definitely don't have. Um, we'll get the POW. You had it in your hands. Is it worth five? Go go thirteen. Chris is good. Go go thirteen. Um, really, uh, that's just based solely on the recommendation of Pat the NES Punk. That's his favorite NES game, and I, I think that's saying something. Honestly, Pat can be a fuck, but he knows his game. So, <laughs> stupid Pat. <laughs> Live it on a prayer. I have I don't have any idea why that song popped in my head just then. Cool man, we'll take twenty dollars worth. Appreciate you. Well what's what's the what's the name of the show? Game Chasers. Game Chasers. So I get, you know, all, all these scraps that y'all talk about now is finally becoming my day uh, quite regular as a matter of fact. So uh, you know, I I'll, I'll continue this little streak that I'm on. Why not? So there's this local mall around here that closed down a little while back. Well, they're trying to reopen it as, best way I can describe it is like an indoor bazaar, basically an indoor flea market, if you will. And they got this section that's kind of their storage area slash maintenance room. The, the mall's dead, it's empty. And there was no one there, the door was open, by open. I mean, I went up and pulled it to see if it opened and it did. <laughs> So I went in, I went in snooping around, being nosy. What was I looking for? Video game sh I gotta be honest with you, I was, cause you never know. So literally yesterday, I get these texts from Jay and all they are are pictures and they're pictures of this PlayStation display case. I ran across a uh, PlayStation 1 stored display cabinet. I said, hey, let's come back today. I grabbed the camera, let's videotape. So we're basically here now because I'm gonna take Billy into the forbidden sections of the mall <laughs> without asking and I'm gonna show him and then we're gonna go to the office and we're gonna ask if we can buy it from him.
Hello? Maintenance? Hello? I've heard of people finding store cases like this before in other abandoned malls. This place used to house hobos. Actual hobos would come in here and house themselves in this mall. It's been abandoned for like the last uh, 15 years or so. You know, this is one of those deals I see. I see people post about this kind of stuff online. Like, you lucky son of a bitch. It's never going to happen to me. And it happened to me. Hello? So this mall was the mall I used to go to when I was in high school. That's that's my connection with this mall. This particular mall is where the arcade auction was held, where Jay got the Tekken cab. Now that arcade area is completely gone. I walked past it. What the hell? I it lit up. I went over here, and then when I on the way back, I saw that. The PlayStation display case. That's my PlayStation! I'm not freaking out as much as I, as I would be if it was like an, an, an NES or Super Nintendo display case. But the fact that we've come across this thing is immensely cool. God, this thing is awesome to me for a couple of reasons. One, I'm a huge PlayStation fan. Have been since PlayStation 1. Not only that, I have probably bought a video game out of this cabinet because this thing was in KB Toy Store. So this had to have come out of KB. You take KB Toys or Sears. No fans or buts about that, because those were the only two places in this mall that sold video games. This is a relic from the mid-1990s. This has been painted over, but you can still see, I don't know if you can get it on camera, you can still see the PlayStation symbol in the back. And this thing, like a drop card, I think it's part of the mold. So this can be cleaned off, because this should be, well, it should be gray like that. It's dirty, it's dusty, but that's fine. That. Dirt and dust does not reflect the shape of this item. Um, the only thing, did you just fart? <laughs> really? So that's obviously where you put a TV. TV speakers right here, probably. I, I gotta tell you, if we can't buy this thing, I'm gonna be a little bit heartbroken. It'd have been too big for someone like Sears to give a shit about moving. And what use would KB have for it? They want the product inside of it. I know I want this thing. The next step is uh, going into the office and trying to explain to them that I want this cabinet. I'm kind of nervous going to the office because um, we weren't supposed to be where we were. So, because if it were me and someone was like, hey, I found this in your maintenance area, um, your storage area, how much you want for it, the first thing I would say is, what the hell are you doing back there? I just can save that thing, dude. That thing was most likely, it's already, part of it's already been painted over. The rest was probably going to be painted over and it was going to be stuck out here in a store somewhere and nobody would have been any and none the wiser, so. As we're walking back, I see some of these spaces along the hallways have shelving units. And they got them set up, you know, it's kind of like one of those hallway display kiosk things. Uh, you can rent this space and with that, I guess you get these shelves. One is catching my eye. So basically, I'm totally interested in these. They're, they light up. And I figured I wouldn't use them for games, but I would use them for like toys and stuff, all my G.I. Joes. <laughs> I'd use them for like G.I. Joes and Transformers and stuff like that. Uh, maybe put a few uh, vehicles on top. I saw those shelves four months prior when I was back there the first time. <laughs> they were back there? They were back, yeah, you didn't know that? They were back there and they moved them into a hallway. Wait, um, you did, the PlayStation one wasn't back there the first time? No, PlayStation one wasn't, I didn't go that deep the first time. I didn't go that deep the first time. It was just in that first section. Oh my God, this would be perfect for, for me. I, I, I could put games in it and I could put toys in it. It, it. it doesn't matter. I want this thing. It does on both sides, actually. What's it say? It says KB Toys. Which was... Painted over, obviously. Painted over, uh, looks like really cheap paint. Shitty paint job, one coat. Probably come off with some paint stripper or something. Maybe something not as harsh. This was an old KB toy cabinet. A game, you know, a place where I, I probably bought something out of, you probably bought something out of, because, you know, same mall, same town. Um, so that's kind of neat. As a teenager, I would actually, this is the old KB toy store, I would buy toys for me, even as a teenager. Um, I would, I'd 
wrestling figures. Um, I don't even remember what else. Uh, yeah, but I go in there all the time, even games. They had some games in here. I bought a few games from this very store. But anytime I went to the mall, you know, in, in, in middle school, I would go to KB. Anytime I went to the mall when I was in high school, I'd still go to the KB toy store. Me and Billy actually shopped this thing together once the, the wrestling figures started going on clearance and once KB started closing down and whatnot, we would go there quite a bit to pick up, pick up toys, video games, whatever. I guess you could say I kinda gotta have it. These display cases that I'll say KB on the side came out of this, so a, another part of my teenage life, my gaming life, could actually be a part of my actual game room, which I think is awesome. So most likely all of that stuff came out of the KB Toy Store? Yeah, probably so. Okay. Mm -hmm. He may want to sell those. Okay. Well, I mean, like the, the, the PlayStation one, that was, that was hidden. That's yeah. collecting dust. Mm -hmm. These other ones, obviously I'm sure he moved them out here just to make it look like, yes. hey, this is what like you can kiosk. do with this uh -huh. space. Right. right. Uh -huh. So we go into the office to talk to the lady that's there, and she doesn't own the mall. She doesn't have the authority to sell us things. So she's going to call up the owner. Can I put him on speaker? Is that all right? You on speaker? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, Hi. hello. How are you, sir? My name is Jay. Jay? Yes, nice sir. Talk with you. Um, I, I saw the uh, cabinets uh, down by the old champs walking around in the mall, and I noticed that uh, underneath the black paint it says KB Toys. Um, I, would, I would like to have those. I don't know what to expect here. A little bit nervous, um, but again, all you can do is ask. And you actually have uh, another display cabinet that says PlayStation down the side. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about or not, but it most likely probably came out of a KB toy also. Is that something yeah, I, that... I don't know. <sighs> well, I mean, it's about a 6x4. It uh, has sliding glass doors on the front, similar to the, the KB ones. Um, is that something you'd be uh, consider, considering selling also? All right. I'm really nervous here because I'm totally expecting, or at least I'm worried that he's gonna say, no, we have these displays here so people can come rent spaces. I'm not gonna sell them. $95 for that? $95, sold. My number was a hundred bucks on this thing. Yeah, look, cheap, cheap J, cheap, cheap shady J was willing to pay a little bit of money for this thing. $95, perfect, that's where I wanna be. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Now we got these other two KB toy cabinets. Okay, Mr. Holmes, thank you. Hmm. All right, he said 185 each and 95 deal. Okay. $185, that's a lot of money. Um, but we'd be stupid to, to not walk out of here with at least one of these because score on the PlayStation one. I don't take our public credits. I need something more real. Okay, well, I definitely want mine now. <laughs> and I know you want the PlayStation I one I definitely want the PlayStation one, yes, for okay. sure. So, uh, um, let's, yeah, it might take us a little bit to get a truck out here, like, maybe next week, is that okay? I want, definitely want to pay for them now. Um, if you're gonna pay for them, I would put them up, right, Trina? If they're gonna pay for this place, I would put them up, maybe next door. Hey, 185 is a lot of money, but, we're just gonna bite the bullet on this, and you know we're not gonna complain, complain too much because these are one of the kind, unique items that we've we've never run across before. Uh, dude, I'm I'm excited as shit right. I'll stop. I'm I'm excited. Hundred dollars is where I wanted to be on the PlayStation case. The official way. <laughs> the official way. What's that nope. tell you? PlayStation nope. One. in there. This, this, ah, damn, this, this made the day. Really fucking cool. So right now we're stashing this till we can come back and uh, pick it up with a truck or van or something, which neither one of us have. <laughs> As we're taking them down the hallway, Jay notices something on one of the sides. Sunlight that's coming in from like the, the skylight uh, above hits the side, which is painted black, mind you. <clears throat> and as it hits, I see letters. 
little Nintendo sign. Nintendo 64 is written on the side. No way, really? Yes! I don't even see it. Dude, I'm telling you, here's the 64 right oh, I here. See it. I see it now. And this is Nintendo. Like you can barely make it up. Holy fuck. Holy sh Nintendo 64! Nintendo 64! It says Nintendo Dude, it says, 64. Dude, it says KB Toys, and then like right here. Can you get it on camera? I'm trying to, man. It's really hard to see. This is beyond cool. The fact that these things say Nintendo on them makes this 10, 15, 20 times more exciting. Dude, that's f***ing unreal. Holy shit. Right here, try to get the four. Anything? Yeah, stay right there, stay right there. You kind of make out the six. Ah, uh, dude, I'm like, I'm like super stoked now. We saw the KB, but we couldn't see the Nintendo. No, it was too dark. Holy crap, man. There are probably people watching right now who went to that mall to that KB toy store and bought an N64 an game out of that shelf. This Maybe. is a Nintendo cabinet for KB. These were actually used to display games back like in the mid 90s. How awesome is that? <laughs> These things have black paint painted over the entire thing. Holy f I can't believe that, dude. I don't know if we're gonna be able to clean these up and get this black paint off without ruining it. I could slide a pegboard in the back. I'm gonna get that other one. Not today, but I'm gonna get that other one in a few weeks. A, few, a, week, a week or a month or something. This definitely was used for video games, most likely, obviously, Nintendo games. Um, and that just makes the find that much cooler, honestly. I am not the biggest N64 fan in the world, but I still have to marvel over how awesome this is because how often do you run across something like this? You know, if I wasn't such a nosy little bastard, uh, we'd have never found these things. All of them are painted on. Can we get these things cleaned up? <laughs> or shizzle, what he said. Obviously PlayStation logo on both sides here. I'm gonna put like a 13 inch TV in here. So we're here at the mall picking up our display cases, our awesome super display cases. Not everybody has something like this, you know? We finally have a truck, albeit it's a small one. It's Melvor's small little truck. We're gonna pick up the PlayStation one. I'm gonna have to come back later with Chris because he's got a bigger truck and get the two uh, Nintendo cabs. Uh -oh. oh, oh, you know what can you do? LEDs behind here to make those glow. Yeah, I think I can put lights behind there. So yes, I said to, we wound up buying all three display cabinets because there was no reason to not. It's been a few days, but the shock of actually getting these things really hasn't worn off. I'm still super excited over this find. Hey, do you want to unlock your door first? It's open, shut up. I honestly have no clue of where he's going to put this thing. I hope at the very least he cleared a path so we could get this thing through his apartment because that in and of itself is a feat. My, my apartment basically is five years of this show. Yeah, I mean, everything that you've seen us get and everything you haven't seen us get is in one little two-bedroom apartment. <sighs> I think this thing's gonna work right here where it's at. Looks pretty good, huh? I need to get this top piece cleaned up, get some LEDs in there. It's gonna be nice. That requires him not being lazy and actually doing it, so if it happens, we'll put it on video. You should just put this stuff in there. <laughs> Anybody want an ice cream? <laughs> no, y'all don't need any dairy whatsoever. <laughs> All right, so it's time to go to a flea market that we haven't been to since that's my PlayStation. Something fucking wrong with you. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
come to this flea market very often this is one of those middle of the week flea markets so um we do you want to go tomorrow just some extra games i picked up yeah are these, are these all the games you have they're all getting collected they're all i have out here yeah okay same old same bunch of commons too highly priced Finding retro games at the flea market is at an all-time high of competition. A, it's slim pickings. You better get there when the son of a bitch opens, otherwise it's gonna be scavenged off. It is what it is. Oh, that's gonna look like fucking sh**. How much are your games? Five each. All these, what about these? 10 each. But I don't really like the numbers here at this flea market, because we're finding stuff, but not the stuff that we want to find. Not even Chris is actually finding anything that he needs, and or at least at the price that he wants to pay. Ten dollar cartridges, no matter what the f they are. It's fucking Barbie or Madden 94, 10 fucking bucks. No, I'm not coming off the price. <laughs> Those. No. Manuals are something they're always out on the lookout for. They're a part of the gaming experience, the retro gaming experience in my opinion. Manuals were something that you would read when you couldn't actually play the game back in the day. I would bring the manuals to school. I remember bringing the link to the past manual to school and reading it, putting it in my history book while we were supposed to be you know, reading about history and stuff. But I was reading about the history, but the history of Legend of Zelda linked to the past, which was much more interesting. Not true. Stay in school. History is important, so we don't repeat the mistakes of the past, even though we always repeat the mistakes of the past anyway, because people don't pay attention to history. Pay attention to history, goddamn! Cheap, cheap, cheap. 25 cents each. Manuals for 25 cents a piece. No brainer, pick them up. We're not greedy. We're not going to buy them all. We're going to take what we need. I don't, I don't have that one. Take that one. We'll come across a Back to the Future Part 2 and 3. Hopefully the manual will explain how to play this convoluted game. That one. I got that one. I got that one. Do you need it? I actually do need that. I just cataloged that last night. I need that manual. What's cool about Super Mario All-Stars is it's Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, which were on the NES. Now they're on Super Nintendo. And it's uh, Lost Levels. Lost Levels is what Mario 2 was in Japan. I remember me begging my grandmother, me and Chris, begging my grandmother to go get that game, even though we actually already owned Mario 1 and 3. We never owned 2, we never owned, obviously, Lost Levels. Lost Levels is gonna be special to me, um, because, and yeah, I know this is sad, but me and Norm the Gaming Historian sat at a convention one year, and we beat Lost Levels in about four or five hours in one sitting. I don't know when I'll have more, maybe next week. All right, here you go. What the, what the... Actually, I need one more of these. The I might, I might think I'm gonna get that. I'm not seeing any games here, but one thing I do see is this green light gun uh, called the Justifier made by Konami. Now this gun was used for games like Lethal and Lethal, uh, blah, 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 Lethal, your mom's. Now this gun was used for games like Lethal Enforcers. Never seen this one out in the wild before. This is a Konami one, Justifier. Yeah. Says Konami on it. So that's cool. I'm seeing the Namco gun, the one that you can use for Time Crisis. How much for the guns? Three each. Two for five? Should do two for five. Yeah, thank you. A little uh, tip for negotiation, or anything really in life, it's the subtleties of suggestion. And if you would notice, I kind of slightly nod my head yes. That helps more the, often than you would realize. It's, it's the power of suggestion, mind tricks. Jedi mind tricks, if you will. Maybe the power of suggestion. He said two for five and was like, ah, two for five? And she was like, eh, all right, two for five. Um, that's not a Jedi mind trick. That you, no, get the fuck out of here. No, no, you're stupid, dude. You didn't, you know what? 
You no, know, just because you have a Jedi braid don't mean you're a Jedi. Let's look at my track record. Eric, now this girl, and countless other times it's been off camera that, that you guys don't have not ever seen. I'm a cerebral assassin. Oh my God, ah, Where do you go? He's being sneaky. Oh, oh, I saw something. Just checking the old computer shit, computer stuff. All right, so it wasn't a total bust here, but luckily we have an ace up our sleeve. There's a thrift store right down the road that not a lot of people know actually sells games because they're kind of tucked away in the back. What I like about this is we've never been here and they've had this many games before, so I'm definitely gonna take the time to go through each and every single box. Underrated 64 game. Yep. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Oh. Uh, same bad, you should get this. I know okay. you don't have room to get box Genesis games. You know, I'm starting to see some games that I don't have, whatever, and it's been pretty slim pickings for today, so. I mean, that's that's pretty uncommon. I have it, you should have wanted it. Echo is, is a good game, in my opinion. It's difficult, um, but, you know, I need to go back and play that, honestly. I might be able to get further than I ever did, because I think I got to that octopus, and I don't think I ever beat the octopus when I was younger. You know what? I have played Echo the Dolphin. Not a lot, but I do remember. I remember Echo visually just being beautiful. The the colors, the backgrounds, um, just the way Echo moved, the way he looked, everything on that game. It wasn't an easy game, but it looked really, really nice. What do we have here? Yes! Like you legit need this? Yes, I need it. All right, well, I think that's a given then, right? So a while back I got a Road Rash 3 that Chris was extremely jealous of because he loves the Road Rash series. Oh, what's better than riding a motorcycle at high speeds, evading police, and beating the crap out of people? That's a, that's, that's a game I like. The Super Nintendo and the NES was at my grandparents' house where all the kids would come and play. Chris, however, had his own Sega Genesis, and sometimes he would bring that Thing over to our grandparents and he would bring Road Rash with it. What do you say about Road Rash? It's freaking awesome. It's a motorcycle beat em up. That's fucking badass. Do you want to look or not? I'll set the camera over there. No, do you want to look? Be nice. Be nice. Oh, good give a Road Rash too. Be nice. Is that Chris? That's fucking Chris right there. That's what that is. Shit. I've never played it. Is That's any good? That's marker, man. Marker. Is it any good? No. Well, then why do I want it? <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. Because it's Terminator, motherfucker. I'm starting to get excited about what's going on, and uh, if I could just get Billy and Jay to get the hell out of my way so I can look at what what's there, oh, we'll be good to go. You gonna stick them all in the ass? Yep. I'm gonna pull an eight back of Eric. I'm gonna lick it when, I, when they come out. <laughs> Yes, it's a sports game. It's NBA, it's NBA Jam. That, that's that's a good sports game. I know. I used to have it. Now I have it again. One of those games I have not played recently since my childhood is NBA Jam, but it's one of the games that I remember the most, and I think that is because my dad would come home from work, and we would sit in front of the TV for hours, and me and him would play NBA Jam, and... I just remember that being a really happy time in my life, you know, my, me and my dad laughing a lot and uh, He hasn't seen or played these games in ages. This is what it's all about. To other people that's like a dollar or two game, whatever. You know, to me, I, I can't put a price on that game. And this is something from my childhood that I have to have. That, that game was legit. To this day, it's still legit. <laughs> Jay and I have been doing this for years, but Chris is new to this. He hasn't had the opportunity to go out as often as we have and run across things that he used to own, that he used to play, that he has a direct connection with. I think Chris is making out pretty good right now. Urban Strike. I'm pretty sure I had that one too. That one. That's a helicopter, uh, like a top top view, you're like bombing 
Urban Strike, I played a crap load of because I owned the game. I think visually really pushes the limits of the blast processing of the Sega Genesis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're in a helicopter, top view shooter. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think every level is the same, pretty much. It's just your helicopter blowing shit up. That's pretty much it. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's except it's isometric view, but whatever. Whatever. You're such. Oh uh, no. I, I except it's uh, isometric view, but uh, whatever. Fucking nerd. Damn, you're a nerd. That's good. It's really good. Did you get him on camera dry humping me I just now? I, I was I was behind him. Chris is making out like a bandit here. He has this huge stack of games. That that's a good. Don't worry about what I'm picking up. Hey, don't yell at me, dude. What are you? What are you? Is this with? all one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I'm excited and I'm nervous at the same time because I want to get these games at a good deal, and I don't want to pay too much. But at the same time, collecting is getting harder, and commons are starting to be uncommon I don't you know what else is cool about this place is that usually the games are three to five dollars a piece that's max tell you what 18 for all of it okay deal 18 bucks for the stack I I'll wipe my ass with 18 dollars <laughs> so hey this is part of part of the, uh, your payment all right. Chris got a lot of games here paid maybe $2 a piece for him. And the thing is, he got games that he wanted. He got games that he grew up, he, that he has fond memories of playing. Uh, to get stuff like that and to get it cheap, that's that's a win all the way around, don't matter how you slice it. You know what? Just keep the 20. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a nice day. Thank you. That's pure treasure, pure awesomeness for me. So, awesomeness. What the f did I just say? Oh. I think I'm about due for another beer. Help me with this, Chode. Paisley, look out, it's heavy. You're gonna talk shit and you want my help. It, well, All considering right. it's your cabinet, right? <laughs> this one ain't. <laughs> so we're here at Chris's. We've already picked up the two Nintendo cabinets. Jay calls me, hey, I need a truck. These things were original KB Toy Store display cases for N64 and they have N64 on the side with KB Toy logo and all that. These were used to display games and people would buy games out of them back in the mid or late 90s. They've been painted over with black latex paint. And now it's time to see if we can get these things cleaned up. Well, Chris, being the redneck that he is, has a rednecky way to get the paint off. I wanna spin it, but I don't wanna bend the bottom of it. You need to put something at the bottom. He does it anyways. Just on that corner. All right. Let me go get my uh, drop. Right, let's see if this works. I have a power washer, so 3,500 psi power washer, so we can use that to strip this paint off and possibly not disturb what's underneath that. So that's what that's the that's the route I think is best is is using the pressure washer. And, uh, it's gonna work. It's gonna take the paint off. That's just poly, that's just, that's just latex paint. That stuff's gonna blow off of there easy. It's coming off, but it is actually coming off extremely slow. The good thing is it's coming off. So at least we got that going for us. To a slight problem here, something that I thought would happen. Uh, it took off the blue and the O in Nintendo for some reason. The power washer, this is supposed to be blue. That's the O in Nintendo. It's supposed to be blue and it took it off. I don't know. Just when you get down into sciencey shit, maybe, maybe there's like some kind of melding together of these things. It's the blue paint. <laughs> Nothing else is coming off but the blue paint. 
you know, this paint looks like it's been on these cabinets for a really long time and it is just being stubborn as f It's starting to annoy me. And it's not the pressure washer. I took the rag and I gently scrubbed the same area and uh, well, blue paint came off. <laughs> so it's not the pressure from the pressure washer that is doing this. Oh, what, what were you doing last time? I was using a rag and nail polish remover. Uh, we got to get something to soften up this paint so this process goes a little bit quicker. We're going to run to Lowe's. <laughs> Why are your nuts that tan? Do you like lay out or some shit? Melville recommended goof off. Um, he's kind of... He's, Instant. He, he would be the, the go-to pro, if you will, on paint and paint removal. So I'm going to take, I'm going to trust his word. But Chris over here, this says instant. This is we'll just do a test. This is works the first time though. We'll do a test. Anything works the first time if you scrub it long enough. But this is instant. We're gonna buy one of each and we're gonna see which one works best. Oh yeah, you're right. How much did you spray? Uh two three good sprays. It seems to be coming off pretty fairly easy. Golly, this is take a little bit of elbow grease. I wonder if we sprayed this on there, let it sit for a minute, and then use the pressure washer, but not up. Dude, try it, try it, it's worth a shot. I'm optimistic, but at the same time, very nervous about ruining these things because it's gonna be heartbreaking if we destroy the paint underneath. Instant, bitch. It's just sliding off like hot butter on your mom's ass. Butter on your mom's. The butter got hot because it was on your mom's ass. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is freaking awesome. This is really freaking badass to me because, you know, who comes across this stuff? So it, it sucks that they got painted over, but as I'm seeing the paint stripped away, as the paint's getting stripped away, I, I want to see the finished product. So this is, this is something I'm really excited about and I, I hope it turns out really good. I'm actually very excited seeing the artwork start coming through. Uh, it's working. I feel like in the go, oh my God, it's working, Goonies. Good, huh? Despite the fact that, that some of the paint came off with the top layer of paint, which I think was gonna happen anyways, I am very pleased with um, how these things have turned out, how they look, how, how good they still look, minus a few missing paint spots here and there. They're not perfect, of course, but they still look good. They look amazing, in fact, and I'm happy with it. We're gonna pack up and uh, let these things dry out a little bit, a lot of bit and we'll come back and revisit this another day. Once I get this thing all lit up, the shelves intact, cleaned up inside and in my game room, this thing is going to be beautiful. It's, it's cool, we're, we're resurrecting this cabinet that was gonna be forgotten about. I really don't understand how Jay, how y'all, you two f***s like happened across this shit. Like, I really don't. And how that they're still there after all these years, it, and everything out of all the things that that mall has changed. I mean, because it's basically been bum central, right? So, like, there was a squatting village inside that mall at one point. You got a dolly? You got a fucking perch. No, you already asked me that when you came over here. I said no. You just doing the one thing? Pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 99% sure I have bought a game out of one of those cabinets. At one point, I know for a fact my parents or grandparents have, because they that that was the mall, you know, Sears, Sears, KB Toy Store, they were always there. All these memories are coming back to you, and you just, you know, you're eight, nine, ten years old again, or you're a teenager, you know, going, you know, hanging out at the mall, and it's like, yeah, it's a, it just, it feels weird because it's a piece of you that's just, 
That mall's creepy, man. Hey, you gotta let these things dry out, buddy. Just let them dry out. You gotta, uh, you got a space heater you put on in here and... Yeah? I got your mom, she blows real good. Yeah. After Billy and Jay leave, I'm, I, I go out in the garage. Everybody's asleep, all my family goes to bed. I'm starting to feel this emotional attachment almost to this display. Jay has the PlayStation cabinet and I know that one of these two N64 cabinets is going to Billy. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get my hands on one of these one way or another. It's a chode nation, oh what a nation, oh you can't stop me. Billy and Shady, forever game chasing, C-H-O-D-E. Well, if the dude that we're going to has anything there, then they're going to be like a couple bucks a piece. Well, I so. Oh, a couple bucks, two bucks, two bucks. That's what if he has anything. So we are once again heading to one of our very favorite flea market vendors, Don, because we always know that he's got games, games, games. You guys may remember him as the guy who gave Billy that Sons of Anarchy t-shirt for his Atari t-shirt. No, we should have already hit his booth by now. So Don's not here, bummer. But that don't matter, there's still a whole flea market here. We're gonna take a look around. Star Wars one. We need some Star Wars one. He's not looking. All right, so stupid redneck Chris just came up and said he found some games down the way. What the hell's he doing looking ahead of us? That's my question. Right, I haven't been explained these rules. Okay. We have this rule if we go in somewhere, if everyone doesn't go in looking together, if someone walks in first and finds something, they don't have dibs. Oh, okay. Because they went in and tried to undercut, basically. No, I went pee. Y'all said y'all were gonna be right where y'all were at. I came out and y'all were gone. Not only were y'all gone, but y'all were on the other end of the spectrum of the freaking place we were at. So I can't help it if I'm just walking, trying, I, cause I saw y'all, I saw y'all at the end of the aisle. So I'm walking, I'm, I'm walking towards y'all. And I'm doopy 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 doo. And I look over and I'm like, oh, video games. You know what you are? You're the kind of motherfucker I can't leave my fries around. I no, can't, no. I can't, I All can't right. order burger right. fries, get up and, you know and move because you, you guys are? my fries. You know what you kind of guys are? What? Stuff people sent us and then not tell me that anybody sent me anything. That's on him. Hey, okay, it's not like it was a secret. It was on the video. It was on video. But, That's did, okay. That's but true. did you tell me? Yeah, I wasn't going to buy them without y'all. I just was verifying that they were for sale. I call bullshit. I'm looking for video games. What do you think I'm looking for? I can help you with anything. We just want to look in this box. Oh, he does. Right. I've already looked at it. Can I put these? Can I put these down? Yeah. All right. So stupid Chris found one. We got we got you know some games over here. Pretty decent games. Pretty cheap. She said the ones that aren't marked with the red dot are half off. So that's three bucks. I believe all the games in there are half off. All the games are half off. I believe so. Oh my God! There's fucking games at the flea market and they're fucking cheap. Holy shit! Games. Well, Jay and I both have this. You want it? Yep. I'll right. take that. Pretty much everyone has 007 except for Chris. And what's great is he actually used to have the game. I wish there was some sort of fucking data log where I could go back and see how many hours I played each game. Because I'm sure that game, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours played on that game. Actually, that's a really good game. I was, I was a young back then. Hey. 15 year old back. Whew. Hey, look who's actually recording. <laughs> kick him! Kick him! Leave the Billy the door. I don't have Pinbot either. But got him, got him, got him, need him, got him, got him. Here, you need Pinbot. So, most of the stuff in here I have already. However, one of the things that I don't, and I got my eye on right here, is a Terminator for the Sega Game Gear. Ooh, Terminator on Sega uh, Game Gear? I don't have that one. So I don't have a lot of experience with the Game Gear. I didn't grow up with one and my collection for the system is quite modest. So whenever I run across a game like say Terminator that I don't have and it's only a couple bucks, I'm gonna pick it up, why not? I don't know much about the game 
I'm sure it's based on the first movie. Yeah, I might as well get some Game Gear games here. You know, I really don't have a whole lot of experience with Game Gear. Um, I didn't have one growing up. Played a friend's or time or two. The, uh... More sought after PlayStation by collectors. Well, how much is it? Half off eight. It's half off eight. You gotta get it. You gotta you get said it. you had enough PlayStation. You gotta get it. Yeah, I do. You gotta get it. Why not buy it, right? Eagle Strike for Game Gear. That's a really good game. Fine. Yeah, dollar for a dollar fifty, I'll pick it up. Why not? Why not? Fine. Yeah. There's no games here anymore for us, so I'm gonna. I'm just moving on to other things like vinyl now. So. But there's games for me. There's plenty of games. Do that for me. harder. Do that harder. No nuts. So we didn't exactly strike gold here at this flea market, but. We did get a really good deal on all the stuff that we got. I let him add it up, so I'm sure he's done it right. It looks good. $17.50. $18.50 with my glass. $18.50 for all these games, not too shabby considering GoldenEye itself will sell for more than that. So this is a good, this is a win. Thank you very much. Uh -huh, thank you. Now to the next flea market because tap this one out. It is getting late in the day, so we gotta hurry. Sell them all at one time. Yeah. yeah. Well, what were you, uh, what were you asking about? That's just a uh, filler. That's just to keep the things from sticking around. Uh, no, I mean the whole lot. I want $50 for the whole box. 50 yeah, there's 40 in there, 40 games. For the price, it's not terrible, honestly, but when you have everything in the box, you know, you can't justify spending money. If you're just starting off with this Atari collection, this is actually not a bad deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so we're on the last stretch of the flea market here. Kind of going through things pretty quick because like we said, it's starting to close down. I spy with my stupid brown eye, a red box. It's an activator. What's the activator? It's a controller. This thing here in this red box. More specifically, it's a motion controller made for Sega. And it makes a ring around you. They have sensors all around it and you move your hands and feet, whatever, over the sensor and based on what you do, the character on screen will do. It's used for fighting games. I know, I think Street Fighter was uh, one of those games that it was used for. Is it some kind of computer business? Yeah, kind of a video game thing. So, uh, well, it's not a price only. Make me an offer. It's another man's, but. 10 bucks. Of course, I'm gonna shoot a little bit low here. Well, give me 15. If it's complete, I'll pay his 15. Me and him bought a bunch of stuff together, but I don't remember that then. I think that's some stuff Jerry brought up. Yeah, she must have brought up. Do you have any more video game stuff? No. Can we no. put it together real quick, make sure it's all there? Yeah, yeah do whatever you want to do. Yeah, if you can find a place. Right here's good. Yeah, there's a good clean table right over there or whatever. Right? I'm sure it works just as well as all the NES paraphernalia that, you know, like the U-Force and Power Glove and all that stuff. It looks like it's going to all be here. Gimmicky, yes, but as a collector, this is the kind of thing that catches your eye. Is it all there, my friend? Yeah, it looks like, like it. it. Well, here. I'll no. go ahead and take it. Okay, it's all complete. Does this thing work? I won't know until I get home and test it. So, at $15, considering it's boxed, why not? Well, good. So, that's a game you play? Yeah, um, it was. Um, it's basically a controller because usually you can play with the, the pads, but you could step into this and kind of use your body as a controller, but it didn't work half the time. Yeah, I'm right. Well, $15 to tell you how I'm going to get it. They need to be worth my major stuff. Now, what's this man here? Is he with Channel 11 or what? Yeah, um, yeah he's uh, I wish. I'd be making yeah. some money. We basically, we basically uh, do a show on YouTube where we go around looking for gaming stuff like that. So I wouldn't call the flea markets a complete bust. I think we found some pretty decent things, some things that, uh, well, we, we needed. So actually, that makes it a win. Um, Sorry, there's no Bonk's Adventures in this episode. Good thing, good thing, good, what? Good stuff. So we're in the Roswell area, and by the area I mean we're in Roswell. Of course, when we're here, we have to go to Galaxy Games. It's been over three years. The last time we were here, we scored pretty damn good. Thank you, sir. 
I'm really thinking here that their prices are still just as badass as they were three, four years ago. The store looks pretty much exactly the same as last time we were here. The only thing different is what's on the shelf. These would be all the full box ones. They're five bucks, right, you said? Yeah, an average five dollars. Really? Yes. I'm happy to, to pay five dollars for some 3DO games because I don't have very many of them. I'll get this. It's just because it's got Mark Hamill on it. One 3DO game that I'm seeing here that I absolutely think that I have to have is Ring Commander 3. And just merely because it's got Mark Hamill on the cover. And it's a space type game. This is one of those places that kind of takes one certain kind of game and says, all right, we're going to do everything for X amount of dollars. How much your Genesis games? Uh, they usually go about five bucks, unless they're harder to come by, then they're like the higher up. Oh, this one's 20. That one's 20. Obviously premium titles, they're going to charge a little bit more of a premium price. That's to be expected. I see the Nintendo 64 section. I'm dangerously close at this point to completing my Nintendo 64 collection. Duck Dodgers right there. What do y'all have on that? $5. Okay, I come across the game I need here, which is something because it's getting harder to come across stuff I need. Duck Dodgers. Um, 64, five bucks. That's a really good game. Oh, really? How much is the box one? Dude. The box is a little faded, but generally it's a little cheap. How much for the box? Again, this is one of those stores where it's not a super expensive game. Here's our generic price. Yeah, $10 with the box. 10 bucks with the box? Um, I think I'm gonna do that. I don't care if it's faded or not. I don't know, man. It's kind of faded. Yeah, I'm not Eric. It's kind of faded. I'm not Eric, know, so I'm good on that. Actually, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and definitely buy it now if you're telling me not to. The box is a little bit sun faded, but that doesn't matter. Ten dollars for uh, a complete Duck Dodgers on 64 is extremely good. How much is Deadly Arts? Five dollars. I'll go ahead and take that too then. All right, see Deadly Arts, another $5 game. I need this game. I'm gonna pick this one up also. Deadly Arts is a 3D fighting game, uh, similar to DOA or even Soul Calibur. Not that great, ain't no Tekken, but I need this for the collection. All right, I'm stoked now because I'm seeing a Super Nintendo game that I have been pining over for quite some time now, and that is the death and return of Superman. It's a beat em up based on the comic where he died. And it's a pretty good game. It's, uh, well, I mean, I love beat em ups. So anything like beat em up related, I'm kind of into um, Batman Returns, I love. That's a really good game. Uh, it's a good game too. I'll take that. I'll take that. Clay Fighter, down here on the bottom shelf. It's $5 as well, because it's not the special ones that we're going don't you need the regular one? I do need the regular one. So Five bucks, I need this one. I have Sculptor's Cut. I bought that one in Canada a few years back. Um, I have the rare and expensive one. I didn't have the cheap and common one. Well, now I do. Man, you guys, one-stop shop. How much is the Mortal Kombat Mythologies? Or the Sub-Zero? Yeah, another one that's five dollars. That one's five bucks too? Yes. Seriously? Yeah, that's awesome. I was a Mortal Kombat character. I'd be Liu Kang, except I'm not Asian and I can't bicycle kick through the air or shoot fireballs for that matter. Um, but yeah, I'm that's so what I do. Okay. <laughs> How does any of that matter? It's like you can fly anyway. <laughs> uh, actually the Saturn, the Saturn stuff. Now one system that I am lacking on in terms of a collection is the Sega Saturn. Uh, generally speaking, they're like eight, 10 bucks. Eight, 10 bucks? Yeah. It's a good deal on that. It's a bad already have it. Warcraft 2. Oh, piqued my interest here. This thing actually looks factory sealed. If I don't have any use for it down the road, then I'll definitely give it to somebody who, who would want it, but which I actually ended up doing. Alpha would, Alpha would probably watch this video. You better get that! Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Why the f are you recording me when I'm not even in the f***ing episode? I'm just here. Hey, Alpha Omegason, want to do an interview? For what? An episode you're not in! F*** this unsub. Alright, so this King Arthur is kind of calling me, but I'm not sure I want to pay the price that they're asking. Not that it's a bad price, but I'm going to buy a box, the cardboard essentially. I want it to look the best that it can. What do you think? I'll pass on it. 
pass on that. Sorry. Yeah. Leave it for the next guy. Leave it for the next guy. There you go. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, this unsub. This is the final maybe pile that I think is going to be a for sure pile, right? Yeah. I actually have the box in the game. I don't have a manual for the lemmings. Big box PS1. All right, so we got our all our maybe piles going here. We're ready to check out. Let's see what the damage is. It's really 85 so far. 85. All right. That's an extremely good price for all the stuff we're picking up. Two trips, three years apart. Scored both times. Amazing. Last time I was here, I got a factory sealed uh, Ocarina of Time. This time I get a factory sealed automobile Lamborghini. Not quite the same. I understand that. But there's still good stuff out there at good prices. This is one of those stores. I love coming to Roswell and I love coming to Galaxy Games. This is our second time here and the prices, the, the, the people working the counter are just as awesome as they were when we first came here. I only wish, the only thing that I'd wish is that 8-Bit Eric came with us so I could Jedi mind trick him into getting something else that I needed. He only spends so much at once. That's true, but I mean, everything was low. Everything was below market value. So I'm happy spending what we spent. Uh, the Duck Dodgers, no manual, but I got the box. Even though it's faded, I still got the box. I'm probably going to regret that uh, King Arthur. Not getting it? Yeah. Probably. I mean, lo lo loose, loose. It's about a 30. thirty, thirty-five dollar game, and he was saying eighteen. But I don't know. You know, you're gonna, you want, dude. I gotta turn around. You want me to go? Nah. All right, so I've arrived at Chris's place to pick up my N64 cabinet. We're gonna stick it into his truck and bring it over to my place. I see that he has one of these cabinets set up with lights in it, completely cleaned up, his game, his game collection inside of it. I'm trying to buy it off of him because I have no place to put my stuff and I'm trying to clean out my garage. Who does he think he is? Who does he think he is? that goes into my garage gets overhauled and worked on and the cabinet was sitting there and was speaking to me. I just kind of went and got some pegboard and some lights the, to fit the ballast and put all my shit in there. So Chase probably gonna be pissed, but oh well. Uh, it's all good. He actually took the, my version was the worst one. So he took the worst one. Jay doesn't give him the cabinet. Jay's gonna want his which means that I'm gonna have to take the one that Chris has all that stuff in. It's just gonna be a big freaking mess. The easiest thing right now for me personally is if they reach an agreement. What does he want right now? Okay, so. Texting McTexterson. All right. Oh. <laughs> this guy. Now that she's on the other foot. Kind of, actually. Uh, you're right. So what do you, uh, you, you want the cabinet, right? Uh, why not? I'll, I'll listen to the redneck. But I ain't taking saddles and spurs for the sh**. I need, like, I need something more real. More like Republic credits or something. I need hey, the cabinet. Hey, he needs the cabinet. He needs it? Yeah. So what are you, what are you offering? Because you were texting me the entire time I was what'd in pay, Star Wars. What'd you pay for the cabinet? For the third time. 180 bucks is what you pay for the I cabinet. I paid 180. You want 180 bucks? I'll give you 180 bucks. Well, I still owe you on the Sega CD case, right? Well, I didn't expect for you to, I wasn't expecting charity on, on a discount. If you need the 180 bucks, I'm willing to pay the 180 bucks. You know, it's like brotherly brotherly type of love that we have for each other, you know, we fight and shit, you know, and bitch and, you know, wrestle and arm wrestle and shit. But I mean, I, I can't really foresee him like being a dick and being like, no, you're not getting the case. We walked Six Flags Mall the other day. That's as much nostalgia as it is for me or you or Billy. We've influenced him in this sort of way because I think deep down inside, you know, he I know firsthand that he grew up with this stuff because we both grew up with this stuff. And so now he's he's remembering it now all now. I don't have the room like y'all have it. So to have that little spot where I can put whatever I have in there and be able to close the doors and keep them clean, that's a pretty big deal. Now, on top of that, the fact that I probably have bought a game out of that case just like you or Billy, that adds a whole nother aspect to it. Yeah, it does. But I'm not gonna, I'm, like I told <clears throat> Billy before we left, I said, you know, I'm not gonna beat Jay over the head. 
he found them fair and square. If he wants to keep them fair and square, that's fine. I said, but, but, but if you allow me the chance to buy one, I will buy one off of you. You know, being 12 years old and walking into a KB toy store, you know, you started going batshit crazy before you ever got in. You just see the sign, you're like, oh, I'm that close. And then you get, the closer you get, you see all the cool shit and you're like, no, what do I touch first, you know? We'll just cut the bullshit in the theatrics. Um, what do I owe you on the Sega CD case? The bottle of Tawaka, pineapple juice, and a turtles in time. Because I was supposed to give. We'll you go forty-five. So, so you, you gave, you got, you, you said fifty-five on that fucking bottle. Well, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks have passed, and still no pineapple juice. Jay was gonna find a turtles in time. Well, Chris ended up getting one before Jay could find one. So now Jay, kind of technically owes Chris fifty or so dollars worth of games. And so that would be 45 for the the hunt the rest of the hundo. So we'll say 45 bucks. Great. All right, let's do this then. We're even on that. Give me a hundred dollars. The case is yours. If you decide to get rid of it, I have dibs. I'm fucking down. All right. It definitely helps my attitude when they ask me to go above and beyond. Of hey, we need you to come film on a Saturday, and I don't I don't know I work nights, so I don't get to see my family that much and. It's a lot easier for me to say yes, knowing I'm appreciated and put things on the back burner so I can come film. I walk up to his garage. He's got the damn thing lit up and full of games already. <laughs> and I'm like, he already had this motherfucker hooked up. He had it set up. He had his games going, his systems going, the LEDs in it and everything. And he's got mine, mine, <laughs> not yours, mine lit well, up. I took, the, I took the worst, I took the one that was in worst condition. <laughs> what the fuck, what if I had said no? Okay, both cabinets, that's the the one side that you're gonna present, that's the only one that survived. The Nintendo and the 64 logo is the only one that survived. Sure. So I took the crappy one. He, he basically had already stolen it and claimed it and made it his own and then negotiated for it. It's a little dirty, it's a little risque, if you will, but it worked out for him. And honestly, I can't be mad at something I would have done. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker had it already set up in his garage. Sorry. In I, his garage. You know what? You know what started it was. You you knew I was gonna let you. No no I I, I, I swear, right hand of the man. I honestly I thought you were gonna throw a bitch fit and make me bring it to you. If he would have said, "Hey, bring it over to my house," that would have been nothing I could have done about it. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and bitch and cry and uh, you know you paid the money for it, dude. It's yours. When I got home from the ER from taking Paisley, I was stressed out as shit and I was. I kind of needed to take my mind off of something. So I walked into the garage and I just, I looked at those cabinets. I started thinking, I was like, man, that's so cool. Cause KB Toys, man, I used to beg my parents every time we go, I'll tell me, let me go into KB Toys. The more he's come out with us and starting to rekindle that love of retro that he actually grew up with himself, he's becoming more of a gamer now. So his garage is turning into more of a, a game room, a, a nerd cave, if you will. I was like, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm sorry. It was it was like I was 12 years old again. It really was. We're turning him from a redneck into a nerd. A redneck nerd, I guess if you will. He's always going to be a redneck. You can you can take the redneck out of the redneck, but you can't take the redneck out of the redneck. Like that don't make sense. <laughs> get an old couch from like Goodwill and I'm gonna have like a projector with a screen and so that way I can start having game night or whatever or I have my own game room. Never ever imagined that I'd have a couch and a recliner in my garage and this big massive ass projector screen and I'd play video games out there. I mean even me, my dad comes over now and we'll play NBA Jam like all the shit that I played with played with him as a kid we're playing again you know and it's that that right there you know to have a couple beers with my dad and play NBA Jam that's the shit. That's why I do it. That's honestly why I do it. You know, it's not that I'm some huge, huge collector or gamer, or, you know, I, I grew up with this stuff. And now that, now that I uh, am playing what I've used to play, I'm picking up games that I've never played. We start playing that old game on that system, but we've never played it before. So even though it's a retro game, something that I've never played, and I'm sitting there playing it with my friends or my dad or a family member. It creates new memories, and I think that's what video gaming is pretty much all about. I think it's good, maybe, to a degree, as long as he f***ing keeps rolling the camera when he's supposed to. You son of a bitch. That's a really good game.
This is the day after Retro Palooza 2, and me and some of the guys uh, that were guests at Retro Palooza, we're gonna go out and uh, we're gonna go game chasing a little bit. We got um, Wood from Beat'em Ups, Alpha Mega Sin, we got Scott Squatch from Video Game Sellers, Grimsy42, AKA Stupid Scott, and Stupid Gilly. Sadly, we don't have a lot of time to film today. Uh, I've actually got an airplane to catch to get back home, and also Melvor has to go to work, so we are on a bit of a time constraint, which is going to make this a little harder. So hopefully we can find some stuff before the clock runs out. Billy really is jealous of your hair, too. Yes, he is. <laughs> Because Billy can get right out of the shower and within like 30 seconds his hair looks like he just ran a 5k. Yeah. Seriously. The first thing Billy said to me was, how did you get so handsome? <laughs> yeah, he thinks it's like a, a, a challenge. Yeah, he does. I think he actually wants to know. Right? He wants to learn from me. <laughs> because he, he, he wants to go and try to find a secret. He wants to go and get like that potion that he drank apparently to go and get your balls. The secret is not being a 35 year old man living in Texas. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Oh, 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 man. Dunk. I, 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 I feel it in my balls. Wow, that was a kick. I'm sorry, Billy. Billy's being a little baby. Apparently his head hurts. Am I gonna hit it? So, <laughs> we're gonna go look for video games with Adam. F him. Wait, just so you know, Billy's homesick in bed, and right now he's got one foot in the grave from hearing that. If Billy, if Billy, if Billy rocked the f up today, I would have been nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> wait, wait. What do you mean? You are Billy. Oh, the new, new Billy. Your new Billy. Stop it. Stop inflating Wood's ego even more because he's already told enough that he's a pretty man and he has nice hair, so just just don't. It, it, he doesn't need to hear it anymore. Dude, wouldn't it be trip? hot if we could get rid of Billy and just have Wood stay? It's freaking getting hot in here. What if, what if you just send Billy to Portland <laughs> in your place? Kick Billy's, send Billy's ass to Australia. Australia. Send Billy's ass to Australia. Soon we will have a new game chaser. One much younger and more handsome. Alright, just give me questions. I, <laughs> I, I had a bunch of fucking insults, but I literally forgot them. I was like, I'm gonna call that motherfucker this and I'm gonna call that motherfucker that. All right, we're hitting our first thrift store here in Dallas and uh, don't know what to expect, never know what to expect. I am excited and this is America and I am with half of the chasers so I'm expecting to find a little Samson at least in this first thrift store because that's what happens on each one of their episodes. I'm pretty excited because we don't have great thrift stores where I'm from. I live in New York and the best thing we have is like Goodwill and Salvation Army. Everything there is really overpriced and they always organize things. I don't want shit like that. I want just a, a cluster of crap on shelves. That's what I want to see. We see the first case that has some games in it and everyone rushes in and is like standing on top of each other. Games under a blanket. <laughs> Yeah, is that what we look like? A bunch of savages? Yeah. We look like a bunch of freaking savages attacking this this meatless bone. But it's just some PS2 and original Xbox titles, nothing good, um, and we're staring at them like a good game is just gonna pop out of nowhere. It's a Metal Gear game, but I don't know which one. It was uh, it was very primitive, very caveman-ish, if you will. <laughs> Um, and I'm saying I can say that because I was a part of that dog pile. These guys are like freaking piranhas on me. Everyone's pushing each other and running and climbing over each other to find these games. So it's it's pretty hectic. Uh, I didn't realize we looked like such vultures. <laughs> Let's see if we can't find some. I'm very excited. I'm hopeful. I'm hoping to find something good. I'm hoping Texas uh, has a little more to choose from than where I'm from. There's really not much. So fingers crossed. Princess plug and play. Mad cats, gun shit. Actually collect those, plug and play. Well, I don't have this particular princess one, so we're gonna have to fight for it. Ooh, an Xbox. Multiple Xboxes. <laughs> for $20. <laughs> hmm. A bunch of crap, moving on. Just right on. See, that's what I do. Look, crap, go, next. Too bad I can't plug them in, see if there's anything in them. Yeah, true. Twenty bucks each. I'd just be like a halo or something. So 
we're all having a lot of fun, but we really haven't found anything too great yet. Actually. Dave, stop brand steering wheel for... Sorry. Can I grab this? Okay, I know what you're looking for. How can you tell? Huh? Are you looking for the Beatles? Rock band guitars. Those are getting expensive. Are they? Yeah. So Guitar Hero guitars, um, for whatever reason, started to climb up just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Um, specifically, the Rock Band Beatles guitars. Um, I just don't know how to tell. There's exactly more guitars. There's like four. So the reason that I buy Guitar Hero and Rock Band controllers at thrift stores is because when you see them at a thrift store, they're really not worth anything. I always see a ton of these guitars at thrift stores, and they're usually pretty cheap, usually just a couple, three, four dollars. But they sell for way more online. So if I can buy them cheap and sell them for a lot more, that's more money for me to spend on games. Oh, no, there we go. So I don't know if you realize, this is expensive. I noticed that they have some shelves that are facing like out towards the street and it's a mess. Uh, there's all different types of stuff on these shelves and Woods was standing there with me looking around and he sees like a really pretty doll I guess that he liked. So he's paying attention to that and I noticed like right in front of it uh, there's what appears to be like a Game Boy Color game. This is what happened. Here it was. It was right on this shelf upside down. Ready? It was, he was looking at this sexy little doll and I was like, Hey, I see Game Boy and it's not a junk one. So at least a Donkey Kong. Not it's bad. something. And then he made that face. Okay. I think Wood was just a teeny bit bummed that he didn't get the Donkey Kong Country. This close. My hand was right next to Donkey Kong. So who found this, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. three dollars. It's alright. Wasn't like caught slipping or anything. <laughs> <laughs>
DFW is huge. We just haven't made it out this far. Haven't had a chance to, so. So this is our last stop today. This is our last chance to find anything. I'm really hoping we find something because this so far has been pretty much a bust other than a few scraps that people have found. And I'm really hopeful, but we'll see. One of the things that you know is deadly wrong when you walk into a thrift store is when you see stuff like this. That's a big no-no. You never do that. My thing, if you cite eBay, eat a d If you're gonna tell me, if you're gonna regurgitate eBay shit to me, I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna show you, no, that's not right, because here it is right here on eBay being sold for this price. And then we go from there. I've done it before. All right. I'm ready for a war now. So I find this Tiger handheld pinball game and it's not really something I'm into and I know Wood is collecting these. I know this is something that he would like in his collection so I happily hand it over to him. They're cool little handhelds so that Tiger managed to get the licenses to various different franchises and make some pretty badass little handhelds. So yes, the, they're not really fun to play, almost almost none of them are fun to play, but you have ones like Castlevania and Sonic, and there's even a uh, Virtual Cop one that comes with a little mini pen gun that you shoot the screen. I collect these, so he gave it to me, because Grimsy is not always horrible. Right. Well. <laughs> I think that sometimes when groups go out game chasing, everyone's like so cutthroat and always trying to outdo the other guy. I, I just like to look out for my fellow collector and I'm happy it went to a good home. Big money, big money, big money. Three. What do I win? A hog. That's not three, that's E. <laughs> uh, Alpha is really fun to game hunt with or even just go into random stores with because he can pick up any random item and just tell you like a story about it. Where has she been my entire life? Been waiting for this. Well, oh, man. <laughs> She's, wow. Dude, hardcore side boob though. Not bad, not bad. I'd even take the hairdo too. This is pretty much our last chance to really find anything today and we didn't really find anything. <laughs> uh, so at the end, it did kind of suck that we weren't able to find anything. I am a bit disappointed, but at the end of the day, it was really cool to get to go out and have a, at least half of a game chaser, game hunting experience. Grimsy found me pinball, so I guess, found you could, I guess you could have my save. How much was it? A dollar ninety-one. A dollar ninety-one. Good old thrift store ass. writing on the on the back there. I collect these, so I'm happy. Color 91 is weird. Scott, did you find anything so far in this this little outing? I found love. In, all the, in all the right places. In all the right places. <laughs> you find an ecstasy of uh, little guy and this beard is funner to play with because it springs back better than mine does. You know, the thing about game chasing is it, when you go out looking, you, you never know what you're going to find. You never know if you're going to find anything. Um, that's the risk with all this. I had a lot of fun, even though we really didn't find anything amazing. Uh, but today was all about just getting to hang out with everyone for a little bit longer before we had to go back home. Overall, we just had a really good day. Had a lot of laughs. Didn't find it, but doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, I think it was worth it. It was really cool to hang out with everyone. It was really cool to go game chasing in an area that I typically am not in and with a group of people that even though I see them at conventions and stuff, I, I usually don't get to go game hunting with. So it was a really cool experience. It's something that I wish we could do more. Um, I hope to hang out with everyone again in the future really soon and film more videos. They are, they're incredibly cool guys. They're f***ing knuckleheads like I am. You know, it works out really well. Got, got tons in common, so that helps. And if we didn't, then, you know, I'd just bury them somewhere. At the end of the day, it was more about having fun with these guys and picking up Alpha and spinning him around and having a laugh with Katie and Scott and getting to meet Melville for the first time and hang out with him. So it was a good day, and it's, it's as Aaron Stapish would say, it's never about the games. It's about the memories you make along the way. You know what, whether people find anything or not here, that, I don't care. That's not what it's about for me. I'm having fun with my friends. That's what I care about. That's the big find on this episode. So I think everyone else would agree with that. Now, that being said, would it be nice to find a gem, of course. <laughs> hey, look at that. I wasn't there and they all failed miserably. What do you know?
Billy, I do wish you had come along, um, but it probably would have smelled worse. There would have been more like farts and burps in the car, so I kind of wish you had come along. Here's the deal. So everyone's over here playing Circle Jerk on one side of the store. Is the mic rubbing against anything? I made it through this video without saying, caught slipping, chode, or I'm a floating head, so I think I did pretty good. Fucking what? How do I want to word this? I can't say we come across Domino Rally, because I'd say a box of Domino Rally. I can't say two Domino Rallies. Zs. I get in, I look, I look at what needs to be looked at, see what I can find, and I get the f out. It was like four or five years ago that I was in a Game Chasers episode, and then now this has taken like a year and a half to just start editing. So by that logic, it'll be like 2025 when I'm in another episode. So I look forward to that. We needed way more metal to listen to on the car ride. Way more. Yeah, I can't talk, I'm filming. It's actually really irritating going into a thrift store, especially with Melbourne, because he'll sit there and clothes shop and... <laughs> we get to the second thrift store and there really isn't anything extravagant there, but me and Alpha Omega Sin... F we f me and Alpha Omega Sin... If I look nearly as good as Billy does when I'm 47, I'll be a happy Australian. <laughs> I'm not sitting there going through every freaking old lady's underwear garments. So Scott goes digging face down <laughs> up underneath his shelf and actually met. Stop, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done filming and there's two guys over there with leaf blowers blowing like three leaves around. They're not doing anything. They're just. They're just like with me. Fuck Billy. <laughs> On today's episode of the Game Chasers. Nine. Do you know where any video games may be? I have no idea. I'm willing to spend a little bit of money for something that I've never even seen before. This American. one has something to do about Apple because Apple means Apple. Never gonna ever run across this again. I have to get it. We should and have taken a boat to New York. Yes. It smells like shit and chicken grease in here. What the. We are headed to the great land of Norway for a video game convention called Retro Spill Messen. This is the first time any of us have, have left the continent, I think. So we're actually really excited to be, to be going across the pond, if you will. Maybe there's zombies and stuff in it. I don't know, maybe my, my imagination is going kind of crazy right now. See, okay, here's the thing. Billy does not like to fly. Uh, so Billy, decided he was going to get intoxicated to, I guess, make it easier on himself on the flight. I, I gotta be honest, I didn't want to come. I really didn't. Pretty freaking toasted when he came over to my apartment that morning. Flying is like the worst thing in the world for me. I absolutely hate it. I'm too tall, I'm getting old, my back hurts, my neck hurts, and being in a flight for like 15 hours is not something that I'm enjoying. Billy, you flew, it was fine, you survived. You're not dead. We should and, have taken a then, boat. To New York? Yes, a so boat to New York. we would have had to go around the Panama Canal. No, we go up through the Mississippi and then motorcycles. Being in a foreign country, I can set goals. I want PAL exclusive stuff. I want stuff that did not come out here in the United States. And 
I this is probably the best opportunity I'm going to have to to pick some of that stuff up. The first thing I'm going to do when I get my bag is put my contacts in and get some talcum powder for my camp crotch crotch rod. <laughs> it is killing me right now. I don't know what to expect at this point, you know. For some been being to Europe, so um, don't really know a whole lot about Norway. I think we're kind of coming here a little ignorant, so. I have what's known as camp crotch. Basically, you walk around all day, your sh starts shaking, and uh, <laughs> fucking uncomfortable. Don't y'all have a thing with trolls here too? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's, the, what's up with that? Let's talk about that for a moment. Like a uh, folklore, like uh, when it was people used to live in really rural places with a lot of forests and stuff, so they didn't want their kids to go into the forest. So they'd make up stories about trolls living in the forest so they wouldn't go in there. So we have a representative from the convention picking us up. His name is Jurgen. Jurgen Jurgens? Jur Jorgens? Jurgens? Jurgen. I am disappointed, however, there aren't any game stores apparently, and there's no flea marks or anything to go to. So looks like all the games that we're going to come across are going to be at the con tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. I want to come to Retrospomissen because I've never been to Norway before, and I don't travel internationally that much. And uh, also, the Game Chasers are going to be there, uh, Brenda Floss is going to be there. We're going to have a good time, we're going to probably get in some trouble. It's been really awesome actually seeing a completely different country. <laughs> it looks, it doesn't look like, it, it looks like, it looks like where my dad's from, it looks like Tennessee. Tomorrow's the convention, we're gonna head over there, we're gonna set up, and we're gonna go to the hotel and probably just relax tonight. It's opening day of Retro Spill Messin'. There's a ton of stuff here. A ton, a ton, a ton of stuff here. I'm definitely seeing stuff that I want. I'm definitely seeing stuff that I need. Ooh. Prototypes. Oh, the Steven Seagal Super Nintendo prototype. I'm super excited to get me uh, some, some really cool PAL games, some exclusive things that came out here in Norway, um, well, Europe and uh, didn't come out in the United States. <laughs> that didn't come out here. I know, obviously, look at that. It's pretty cheap. We're seeing stuff here priced astronomically high until you do the conversion from kroner to dollars. The price looks scary, but it's really, honestly, it's, it's, the, it's not that much different from US prices, especially at a convention. Well, you have to be careful, though, in pricing PAL games is the fact that they vary by the PAL regions. There's two different PAL regions, PAL A and PAL B, and on top of that, there are Scandinavian only releases that are indicated even on the label. So for example, if you're buying a game like Aladdin, the regular PAL version that came out in most of the uh, territories, that's a game that'll cost you under a hundred bucks. But if you go for the Scandinavian only version, it's a lot more. Dude, y'all's artwork is so much better than ours on the, some of these games, most of these games. The artwork is different on the NES games. Um, I actually like their artwork better. I don't understand why the variations, why ours was different. I think a lot of this artwork is the original uh, Famicom uh, Japanese artwork. Um, I do believe, I might be wrong on that. Oh, and their Contra is called Pro Protector. The, the characters are actually robots. So this is not even a name variant, it's actually a variant variant because it's different gameplay. It's not, it's the same gameplay, but it's just different sprites. I actually wouldn't mind having that. One thing that I'm seeing that's really super cool, I would love to have, is a boxed NES. But here in Europe, they got a version that we did not get, and it comes with the original TMNT Turtles game. Uh, the, here it's Hero Turtles, not Ninja Turtles, but regardless. I'm sure it's pretty damn expensive, and there's no way I'd be able to get this thing on the plane with all my other stuff without having to check another bag. They have hanging this World of Nintendo mirrored kind of uh, globe. It says World of Nintendo. Apparently there's only like five of these in the world or something like that. And one of them is right here in Sandefjord, Norway. <laughs> What you doing? No, I've actually been wanting to get this. Wow. I gotta get this. Now I'm seeing another non-US released Master System game called Laser Ghost. You're this girl 
and you're trying to, she's in this haunted mansion or something, and from what I remember, you're just, you can use the light gun and you're trying to shoot the obstacles away. And it's kind of, I guess kind of like Baby Boomer. I'm gonna get this, but we don't actually have any Norwegian cash right now, so can we, uh, can you put this get aside out for of me? Here. <laughs> uh, once we get some cash, can you set that aside for me? Sure, man. All right. I love it. The energy here is good. Everyone's happy. Everyone's stoked to be here. Puffy yeah. stickers. Puffy stickers. Yeah. Puffy stickers. These are awesome because they're Ninja Turtle puffy stickers. One for Melbourne. It's very cool that we can come out to something like this so far away and get a chance to meet uh, some of our fans on a completely different continent, a different part of the world. Still, we want to give you this. I don't have this box. Okay. This is freaking amazing. Yeah, it, it's complete. So, here you have your very own version of the Super Mario World, Game Chasers Edition, where you are Luigi, Jay is Mario, Melwar is uh, Yoshi, the Dango is Bowser, the Ghost House are uh, Alpha Omega Sin House. And Dude. <laughs> Dude, this is awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought in a million years we'd be able to, to go to, to Europe to, to meet people who watch the show, but we've been granted this opportunity. They're cool. They're, you know, they're funny. They, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're smart people, actually, so it's, it's nice to be here. A good friend of mine made this for you. We really did. <laughs> What's his name? Frida. Frida. Her yeah. name. Yes. Okay. Apparently in Scandinavia they had NES rental cases, which I did not know about. Oh, you feel that you feel that snap? That's the sound of your will of collecting breaking. It's actually like felt inside. Yeah. System like felt. Uh, is, it, is this gonna be a nice yeah, little gonna be fun a <laughs> let, me, let me see this thing. No, it's actually pretty sweet. Did you fart? No. Did you fart? No. Well, earlier. It smells like sh** and chicken grease in here. What the f***? What? <laughs> Alright, last day of the convention. Um, it's time for us to look. We pretty much said hello to everyone who's going to want to say hello to us. No nuts, do the robot. Uh-oh, not too bad. <laughs> One thing I'm looking at here is Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Um, we got it here, but it was just Bad Dudes here. They dropped the Dragon Ninja part. I, I want this version, though. I want this version. Why? because we don't have it back home. I, I just, and it's it's the same game, just title change. If you want to play a PAL NES game in North America, you'll either need a top loader NES, or if you have a traditional NES, you'll have to open it up, find the lockout chip, and clip a pin on there, and that'll, that'll enable you to play them. What you on this? Uh, Somewhat cheap, it's like a hundred crown. If right. you're not getting it, I will. I'm, I'm getting it. I said all right, mother. So one Master System game that I'm seeing here that I'm pretty sure that we didn't get here in the States is Sagaya, Sagaya, Sagia. I don't know how you say it. It's a shooter. I don't have it. I like shooters. It's a cheap Master System we didn't get. It's a cheap Master System game we didn't get. So I'm, I'm gonna pick this up. Yeah, I'll get it. Look at that. I'm happy with the prizes. It's good shit. Nice. You guys are awesome. Selling a game to the famous completionist. <laughs> I wouldn't say famous. It's not even, it's for Jared. I love Pro Jared, it's for him. In Norway, there's a lot of Master System games here because that was the console of choice out here. In fact, they got a ton more games there than we got in the United States. You know, sometimes on a certain system, if you play a PAL game, so you see, say you play a PAL NES game on your modded, NTCES, NCTS, NT, NT, your American NES, there's different rates of speed. Now, I'm not gonna get all technical because I'm not Roo. Now, Master System, you don't have to worry about that. They weren't designed specifically for PAL. And they're region free, there's no region lock or anything. So you get a, a PAL uh, Master System game in Europe, play perfectly fine on your uh, Master System back at home. Yo, have you guys played Chess Master? Yes. It has one of the most bitchin' theme songs ever on the Super Nintendo. Are you serious? Yeah. A chess game, huh? Yeah, it's crazy stupid. 
Okay, so another game I've been looking for, this has been, kind of been on my wish list for a while, is uh, Smurfs on NES. I don't have this. I've seen several around here, which obviously tells me it's a pretty common game over here in uh, Europe. I'm seeing this Tom and Jerry on the Master System. Uh, I, would, I would look it up online, but my phone doesn't work out here. Uh, I would look it up and see if it was an exclusive, but it's actually a, a really good price on it, so I'm gonna pick it up regardless. So I, I don't have it anyway. Where are we at? Seven fifty, eight fifty. Eight fifty, huh? Don't pretend you know what the value is. In the <laughs> oh, what the hell did he come from? <laughs> oh my God! I thought we were gonna get away with it. around. Is that high? I don't even fucking know. I don't know. Look, here's the deal. We did good in merch sales. I'm willing to spend a little bit of money for something that I've never even seen before. Um, and Smurfs is one of those things. It's complete in box. One game I would really, really love to have is Mr. Gimmick. It's one of the best platformers on the NES that I don't even understand why we didn't get it in America. It's, 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 a, it's an amazing game. I played it on emulator. Uh, it's rare and sought after. People want it. It's kind of like Little Samson in the States, which, you know, is rare here too. And uh, yeah, it's more, I'm not gonna be able to afford it because it's like probably like a billion crone, crowns, crone, whatever, whatever it is. It's gonna be too much. This. this looks like, oh, is Illusion of Time what they called? This is what they call Illusion of Gaia. <laughs> Illusion of Time. We never got a big box version, did we? No. I found a Nintendo 64, a PAL exclusive game I was looking for. F1 World Grand Prix 2. We got the first one here, but we never got the second one. Don't really know why. Man, we've had we've had a blast, dude. It's been yeah. so much fun here. Yeah. This is a Russian. This is a Russian bootleg. You're off. And it's Super Mario World on a Genesis card. Or I guess this would be Mega Drive. I don't think that it's a direct, straight up port of Super Mario World onto the card, because I'm looking at the screens on the back and I'm noticing differences. What is this? It's a Russian bootleg. They took Super Mario World and put it on a Mega Drive card. Why do they call it 64? Because they're Russians. <laughs> I mean, did you see the Russian in No Retreat, No Surrender? He was an asshole. Sometimes they can be assholes. I'm never gonna ever run across this again. I have to, I have to get it. Just to see what the hell it is. Yeah, or they, they tweak it the ROM. I, yeah. Either way, I'm kind of curious to check it out. And How much? What? Well, that looks like that. Dude, it's very cheap. One fifty. Yeah, yeah. Were you thinking about getting both? I feel like getting both. At least one, but of course you will. So I really want these Super Famicom controllers because they come with the actual boxes and they're in pretty good condition. They have like the the well-rounded buttons across and the rainbow scheme. But I never had them before, and uh, I go through controllers a lot from the amount of games that I play. Would you do 500 for both? Uh, Did you do 500 for both? 500. For both? Okay. That's cool. a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Great, <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna go get cash, we'll be right back. Billy really helped me to negotiate the deal because I'm way too nice. And I watch a lot of Game Chasers, believe it or not. How about a uh, basketball nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's a uh, pretty uh, rare. Uh, pick up a few for cheap. Actually, this looks like it might be kind of cool. Now, I haven't gotten any NES games on this trip yet, but one of those that I'm seeing now that is supposed to be pretty good is called Euphoria. That's a really good game. But the price tag says 900 krone. Think about this. Thinking about it. Yeah. I, just, I need to know what it is in, in US dollars. See, I have this rule where I don't spend that much on video games. It's a little steep, however, he ain't finding that in, in America. It's not happening. This is supposedly one of the better PAL NES games. So, despite the high price tag, I might have to just make the plunge. I just might have to jump right into it. Is that the lowest you come down on it? That way. Is that the lowest you come down on it? Yep, eh? Yeah. Euphoria. But I'm definitely gonna try to talk him down. Is that 750? Finally, yes. These wonderful Swedish sellers have dropped the price on this game to $750. Ha! <laughs> 750 krone. Krone. Because this is 50, would you do 70, 750 for both? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I don't usually spend this much, but I think I got to in this case. Thank y'all, appreciate it. I'm done shopping. So yeah, I'm happy with what, I, what I've picked up so far, definitely. I actually got this for only 500 uh, Krone. Like, I did a deal because I had the well in the box. So that's very interesting. Uh, did it come with a cookie in there as well? Watch it go boy! <laughs> It's okay. He's not Pat. That's that's the takeaway is that he's not Pat, so it's fine. Virtual Spill Messen was a good. The convention was very well put together, very well ran. The staff was professional, courteous, and they made sure that we were 100% comfortable, and we were. I mean, it was... I definitely hope we get to come back next year. It was a lot of fun. Billy here showed me the ropes. We got him down to 500, so I got 100 bucks off, or 100 crown crone. I'm horrible. Crones. Crones off. So I got it for five. Cool net. Shut the f up. It's kind of dumbfounding, actually, that they liked us enough to invite us out. The con was awesome. Um, and it was awesome to see how a different region celebrates retro gaming. And honestly, it's not that much different. It really is not. It's not. Uh, yeah, they got different stuff, but the passion and the spirit is the same. It's It's... I mean, it, it's it's just it's, it's the same culture, really. I really enjoyed Richard Spomisen because I have never been to Norway before, and I didn't know what the audience was. And seeing so many people into all of us was really awesome. I'm not touching you. No. <laughs> Nine. All right, so we had some fun at the con yesterday. Now it's time to do a little bit of sightseeing. I'm not big on sightseeing. I think it kind of sucks. They're gonna hear sure. okay. like, First time in Europe, we want to see the sights, you know? Uh, we want to take advantage of this because we don't know if they're gonna invite us back next year. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's actually spicy. You good? That was delicious. Yeah. This time we're really gonna get into the heart of Oslo and and just take everything in. Uh, no, 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 I want you to rip a piece off. Uh, I ain't eating off you. I, the, the, <laughs> the way you held it, I was like, this is confusing. Sorry to, hey, how's it going? If you're just joining us. <laughs> Probably end up screwing with people. We'll see. Chicken on a stick. It's pretty all right. Palace of Norwegian King, Queen, and Prince. No, you know what's really cool about the palace is you can walk right up on it. I don't necessarily know if I would want, you can't do that at the White House. Yeah, actually, we're looking for video games. Do you know where any video games may be? I have no idea. Do you have any? No. I was so hoping that that guard would just like beat you down or something. Dude, that would have been the best. I would have gotten it all on camera too. And it would have been like, on this episode, of the Game Chasers. Yeah, and Billy's like, no! <laughs> One of the things that I, I really wanted to do on this trip, and I didn't even know if it was going to be possible, but um, I had seen a couple of shows that had uh, these Viking ships that they had unearthed, and I was like, man, I want to go see those things, you know, thousand-year-old boats. Ah, uh, to be in Paris and in love. This is like... I'm, 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 for lack of a better term, I'm fucking fanboying out right now. We're fucking Oslo. Yeah, fanboying out at just beautiful scenery and, yeah. and the ocean and this nice people awesome. and sunshine. You know, I gotta be honest, I really like Norway. Um, I like Sandefjord, I like Oslo, I like, I mean, everything has just been, I don't know, not being at home, so maybe that's what it is. Read my lips, steak, burger. We could never afford to do this ourselves. So <laughs> we could, right. Okay, one word. How was the trip in? Epic. Majestic. Fucking amazing. That's two words. The boat ride's cool, I will say that. In a word, it's amazing. Um, not that I have like Viking ancestry or past or anything like that, but this is freaking awesome. Uh, it's just part of world history right here. Four percent. It's like your four percent Scandinavian. Yeah, with DNA. Did really that? Did... This whole thing, no, it's like four percent. It's like really minute. 
did the Ancestry.com thing. Let me get it up. Just incredible. We don't have this sort of history here in the U.S. That goes back a thousand years. This this is the one thing that I wanted to look sightseeing-wise. This is the one thing that I wanted to see before we left. I would have been furious if this wasn't here. In 1893, they made a replica of it and sailed from Bergen to Chicago. Wow. It's insane. Uh, I wish they had some weapon stuff. What are you going to do? I should have gotten that damn boat and just sailed off. I've been like... That's a Kim Viking ship, dude. That gave me chills, actually. Dude. <laughs> you couldn't resist, could you? I couldn't you? help myself. Like a, just like a child, man. Well, Viking ship's all right. Sitting there for 20 seconds looking at it. Oh, you're getting to see the next supper. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're not what just happened? He's Billy so just sat in front of the door for 20 seconds without hitting the button. Like, hit the button, Billy. Hit the button. So he waited too long to door. hit the button. And then I run to this one to get out, and it's locked. <laughs> He's so stupid, he couldn't open the door. <laughs> Who hit the button? Yeah, after it locked. <laughs> Do we get out there? You dumb American. You stupid American. Oh, shut up. This is why everyone thinks Americans are stupid. No, everyone Thank thinks you. you're stupid because you're yelling on the bus and you're making calls in a scene. <laughs> this isn't what it calls for a scene right now. I actually had a good time sightseeing today. Now, tomorrow, apparently, we're going to go see some more Vidget games. Please stop having to be so defensive. He does. Look, no, he I'm lashes not. out like when you're not on something. I'm just, I'm, I got both staff skills. He's very defensive. He's afraid to show ass. Like to. Day five here. National Day. This is the 17th of May. This is what they call. It's like their Fourth of July, basically. I think uh, they're celebrating their independence from Sweden. I, I am struck by how happy everybody is. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a combination of things. Maybe it's because it's not, you know, 400 degrees outside. Fortunately for us, this is literally right in front of our hotel. We stepped out and just watched. Then after this, they do kind of like this picnic thing. Like I said, they got hot dogs and snow cones and all kinds of crap. <laughs> that is harder. I gotta start trying to do those. Your gym have rings? Mine has rings. Yeah. No, ours doesn't. All the way down. <laughs> <laughs> so Jan, who runs the convention, and really is the reason why we're out here, uh, he has a storage unit and his office is full of doubles. So we're gonna go take a look at that. Oh, I didn't miss that. <laughs> the cereal size still? Yep. Are you serious? Unless it's got something else. Yeah, it's cereal. This is the one I probably got as a kid. Have you, you tried it? Have you tasted it? No. You Jeremy, Jeremy, never tasted it. Are too. they opened up? Yeah. Can't even seal. Oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I missed all. I missed all. It looked like there was a hole in it. Oh. I've never seen one with the cereal before. Flip it in reverse and reverse it. If you bunga 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 chick brock. I was actually kind of just looking at these Master System games and wondering what you were at on Donald Duck. Lucky you, you dying caper. Yeah. Boys, boys, all kinds of boys. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese boys. I'll say 150. 150? Yeah. Yeah. I know we didn't get this back home. And I, I think I want this. Fucker ruined my audio. I know he did. Why not? They didn't come out in the US, so. Oh. It, uh, it's Europe only. Got that in the US, did we? 2600? These Atari games that have German written on them, um, one of them basically is Frogbog. Uh, the others, don't know. You can have those two and that one for 50. They're German, so I'm gonna pick them up. So you don't know what those are? I have no clue what these are. Uh, he said this one is probably Frogbog. US, but. These, I don't know, we didn't get Jungle Book at all, which I'm assuming that is Jungle Boy. Zungle Boy. Or maybe it just means Douche Boy. <laughs> I don't know. Freaking Atari games look scary. Uh, the one with the old lady looks haunted. I don't think that I would want that in my, in my home. 
gotta be honest definitely haunted basically that breaks down to like seven bucks us so 750 something like that now i love mickey mouse games everyone knows that most mickey mouse games are freaking awesome fantasia eh, but land of illusion on master system uh, it's another game that i don't have that we didn't get what do you have on that one they usually go for about 200. 200? Yeah. What's that? 200 is like five bucks, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I come across this uh, Masters of the Universe game. Uh, it's it's a cassette game. Well, granted, I don't know if that's rare or whatever, so I don't know what he's asking for. It's just he likes Masters of the Universe. Oh, you do? I do. I like Masters of the Universe more than he does. <laughs> you know, it's it's for the Commodore 64. Uh, don't know anything about it. Never had a Commodore 64 growing up. We didn't have that type of money. Because you don't know how much it's worth, right? No. No. I don't, I don't know know what 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 so, so, so to be nice, I would have said 6,400. <laughs> and I'm just f***ing with you. Oh, you yeah. can take it with you to 400. I was like, oh shit, I can pick up something super rare. We can just have it at four. Thank you. Appreciate that. No problem. Awesome. It's pain. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. This is probably something I'll never have have the hardware to actually play. I think it's just a really neat um, Masters of the Universe, you know, uh, uh, related. Hell, Helga, ich komme. That means oh I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. What's this one? This one is, of course, the Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy. I mean, you can see that, jungle right? Jungle Boy. <laughs> Don't you want to swing through the trees on the jungle? Did, did you not look at the label? Does, it, does that actually mean jungle? Yeah, it does. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this has been one hell of a trip. This has been an extremely fun trip. Uh, it's time to go home. This was an amazing experience that, I, I mean, I had a ball, you know. This was so cool. I know Jay did too. Wissenschlacht. Wissenschlacht. You make the planes fly around and say Wussenschlacht. Wussenschlacht. <laughs> You know, it was one thing I noticed there. People were a lot less likely to go out of their way to try to be offended at every little thing, which was a freaking breath of fresh air. I, I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, once in a lifetime experience for all of us. Um, if we go back next year, then obviously it's not a once in a lifetime experience, but right now it is. It was like pissing uh, fish in here. That's what I'm saying. Goy is a great place. The people are really inviting, warm, and friendly, genuinely so. The scenery, the, the countryside, it's all fantastic. It's kind of like what I pictured when thinking about a European country. I will say though that Pat was being a little bitch though. Uh, would never have been possible if it were not for uh, starting this stupid little silly YouTube show that we've done. My goal on this trip was to just take everything in and really enjoy everything. You guys are gonna take this out of context and Pat is gonna think I was saying the worst thing about him. I love Pat, it's not what this is about. So when I asked some of the people, what's you know what's the Norwegian food? Sheep head, cut in half, split, and barbecued. I'm open to new cultures and food items, but I'll pass on that one. But you're gonna great. <laughs> I said it, so it's it's a thing. Another day or so wouldn't hurt out here, but we've been gone a week already. Let's get back to the families. And I fit in pretty good. I really did. I'm not saying that I'm a Viking or anything like that. I'm not saying I'm not, though. That was a great fucking episode. <laughs>
seven degrees right now, right? And this is the worst possible time to go game chasing in Kansas City. Okay, so we get to the first flea market here. Closest one to Norm. Um, there's literally like three or four vendors here. Let's go to Kansas in the middle of dead winter. I had a bad feeling about this. Video games? No? All right. One of the vendors is selling expired groceries. I knew it was gonna be like this today because it was freaking cold. Hey, we still got plenty of places to go. It's cold. We need to go to an indoor flea market that is also open year round. Dude, that's awesome. It's like we're in post apocalyptic Detroit. We're like Fallout. Flea market and Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> I found stuff last time here. Turtles in time for two bucks. A, a bunch of games. Let's go. All right, let's go. Here. All right, let's go. I'm really into VHSs nowadays, and I found some Godzilla VHSs for my VHS collection. Other than that, no games so far. Pretty much no pickings uh, at all today. Not to mention the fact they don't like the camera, so we're having to be sneaky. TNC surfing. And they don't like the camera, so we're having to be sneaky. Um, we found we found a vendor, a booth here, who has a bunch of video game stuff, but he is not around yet. It's 10 o'clock. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and wait. Why? Because we're looking for video games. Let's give this guy a little bit of time, because uh, it's something at least. I see stuff I want, like, legit. So after waiting around for about an hour, the guy finally shows up and lets us in. Says he doesn't want to be seen on camera. Fine. It actually looks like it's in really good condition. It is. Okay, so one thing that's catching my eye here is a vintage Donkey Kong plush toy. Uh, that's something I definitely wouldn't mind having. Pretty cool. It's kind of one of the first merchandise pieces that a, a video game had. I wonder if he's firm on it. Only one way to find out, right? Fifty dollars literally is twice what I found it for on eBay, so that's not happening. Was that a um, like a cartoon when the game was based on? It was a cartoon. Yeah, okay. that's how they know that. Yep. I did a video on the history of LJN, and so I talked about TNC Surf Design, and I learned a lot about TNC Surf Design, how it was a clothing company and they had the cartoon mascots and they made a video game about it. I'm looking for these these little guys right here. There's a series Gizmo. based on Gremlins 2. No, this is actually not Gizmo, this is Daffy. Literally almost anything Gremlins related I'm a fan of, so I'm definitely getting this figure. Here you Amazing. Go. Tombstone City. I have both. These of are those. all learning games. Yeah, I have all those. Guys. Learning games are good for imbeciles. I mean, I, I don't know. What, what are these games gonna have? A bunch of Hey, check this out. But this is something you'll see. What is day. it? It's a speech synthesizer for the TS9 and TI 99. Ooh. Like talking to it? Or... Well, no, it makes the games talk, I would assume. Oh. It's kind of like the Intellivoice for the Intellivision makes your games talk. Like B Shave Team Bomber sort of thing. Cool. Five. Five? Yep. Okay. Five on that. That's pretty cool. I ended up picking up two games. I got Final Fantasy X Remastered, and I also got Digimon World. I got both of those for 15 bucks. I did find a couple of things, nothing too spectacular or special. Uh, this flea market was kind of a bust, and they were being really weird with the cameras. Probably some shady stuff going on in here. This is just an off day. Again, Billy and Jay came down at the worst possible time. Hey, I've got a question. Yeah. How come when everybody's like, what's with the camera? No one pipes up. Everybody just looks like at me like, like they're in the headlights. No, like you talked first. So no one else did, y'all looked at me. You told so no like, like, uh, me. Uh, uh, That's not the way. Dude, I told I turn told right two people what we were doing. Oh, he's gotta stop something. That's not even how it happened, you choke. When you talk, and if everyone else tries to talk over you, it looks like we're fing trying to trying to be sneaky. Even though we, we are trying to be we don't look like it though. <laughs> that's the thing. 
I'm just gonna get on my phone and look for thrift stores, flea markets, pawn shops in my area. I've actually come across something here in the first booth. Uh, it's called Pinball, and it's on the CDI. Uh, this is a CDI. Let's make sure it's in there. I don't even know one person that had a CDI back in the day, not one. And uh, I don't ever run across the games for it very often out in the wild. So when I do see one here for $2, I gotta pick it up. Gotta have it. It's Pinball, who cares? <laughs> How about I give you the history like you describe games on your show? Okay. It's pinball. It's pinball. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. You got me there. I watch Game Chasers with my wife. She enjoys the show as well. And so whenever they find a game and a description comes up, I've noticed lately that Billy is getting really lazy with his game descriptions. Uh, one of them, he, it's, it's Mega Man, and the description was literally, it's Mega Man, everyone knows this game. But my wife doesn't know this game. She wanted to know more about it. Uh, there was, there was one where it was a bowling game, and Billy was like, it's bowling, who cares, or something like that. <laughs> Back in the day, it, Nintendo probably did stuff like this. They just etched it on there. It is. Yeah, it's that's legit. It's a Nintendo display cabinet behind us. Like, full-on full says Nintendo. Remember when we were in the, the storage room of, of uh, and you saw this? And I said, that's a KB Toy Story, and it was missing that's the glass. This is, too. this is the glass. Me and him have seen this. This. The Out framework. The frame. What was that frame. back at the, the, the storage? In the yeah. Wall? And it's just, and the frame's in a lot better shape than that, but it's missing the glass. When we went to pick up the Nintendo 64 cabinets, um, there was a red and blue piece of aluminum framework. At the time, we didn't know what, what it went to, but now looking at it here, it's like, oh crap, there might have been pieces of another Nintendo cabinet there. Holy sh! Let's Dude, see if we can get this case. <laughs> It doesn't have any of this, though. I mean, I'm gonna ask. Worst they can say is it's not for sale. Hey, since you two f**ks got the other one, <laughs> guess who gets this one? To these vendors, this is just a display case to put their random crap in. To us, it's a really important display case. Yeah. It's probably gonna be high because he's using this thing, man, but... Hey, it's, it's money. I'm sure he'll just grab another shelf from his yep. home. He doesn't care about this. Gotta ask, right? just doesn't really do much for me. It's okay. Love the one, and I was wondering if you'd be interested in selling that. The Antique Mall gave me the booth owner's number, and I'm gonna call him and see if he's willing to part with this thing. The whole thing, we're at 250. <laughs> That's about $200 more than I'm willing to pay for it. I'd say closer to 100 is a better, more fair price for this. We actually brought some stupid Chris's truck, so we would have been able to haul it home. So it's really more of an inconvenience for them to have to sell this to us. So that's probably another reason why they're pricing it a little higher than it should be. Game chasers, assemble. Who farted? What me? It's Kansas. That's what, that's what it smells like here. Missouri. We're in Missouri. Wherever. Kansas City. Flea marketing just is not in the cards today. Um, however, the day isn't lost just yet. Norm has a buddy who has some doubles and stuff. He said that we could come by and rummage through his shit. Right, so Norm says you're a huge collector. So my collection <laughs> needs more of your games. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that might happen. Sweet. Whoa. It's actually awesome pretty uh, awesome game room going on like the whole entire basement's like arcade slash game room there's nothing in the nes double pile i need however i am seeing super monkey ball on the gamecube which i totally need what are you what are you asking on this i'll be fine that's fine i have monkey ball 2 currently don't have monkey ball 1 and man this game was one that Jay and I played constantly. We would play hours and hours and hours, especially with the mini games. Monkey, Monkey Target being one of our favorites. We used to sit for hours and just play the mini games. Like we would, we would probably play like 10 minutes of story mode and then be like, 
this. Let's go mini games. They all, they all have started y'all's collection, and now I gotta fill my '64 cabinet. I like right. I like the way right. he motherfucker. Do I have a Super Mario Three? I don't think I have a Super Mario Three. How do you not have Super Mario? Dude, that's a staple. You should yeah, have I know. Super Mario. Uh, me and Billy grew up playing at our grandparents, and so definitely got to pick that up. Lots of hours on that game, and that's just that's a state that's a staple. That's a staple video game. There's no, how can you not have Mario Three? That's like one of the that's probably the best Mario out there. Where are you at on these? Oh, I'll probably do I don't know two bucks a piece on any of those. I just need to get rid of them. Oh, in that case. <laughs> That'll work for me. That'll work for me. <laughs> Essentially, when I sell doubles, I, I basically sell them for, for what I got them for because they're not really doing me any good. Hey, you lost Ninja Kid. Huh? <laughs> you lost Ninja Kid. What? Norm, Norm had dibs. Oh, he did? Yeah. You did the Ninja Kid? Yeah, I did, actually. Well, then why wasn't it in your hands? <laughs> I, I set it down because I had to go take care of something over here. Well, does it have... That, that, no. <laughs> I did! <laughs> she set it down! There we go. And it wasn't clearly stated. Greedy ass Norm, always putting his greasy dick beaters on my video games. I didn't know Chris was forming a maybe pile. I saw Ninja Kid, I need Ninja Kid, so I just took it. Even though he stripped it out of another man's maybe pile, <laughs> there was the for sure pile. Okay. Alright, it's, no, it, no, no, it's no, fair. No, Here. No, 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 no. I'll set it back no, down. No, okay, no. no, take the game. Okay, so there's nothing in the doubles that I want in my shady ways. I'm looking through his actual collection. I see a few games in his Nintendo 64 collection that I need. I, I do, actually. I need three. I need this. First game I'm looking at here is called Mischief Makers. At Gaming Movie Traders, they had the game between 10 and 15 bucks. I don't necessarily regret not picking the game up um, because, I mean, there's lots of things I never picked up. Uh, fortunately for me, this game didn't skyrocket like something like, oh, I don't know, Bonk's Adventure. Ooh. Boxed. Dang. Well, it's, boxed. it's a collector box. Yeah, it's one of those repros. Another game I need here, Mystical Ninja. Um, I know, first one, I don't have Mystical Ninja, but here it sits in front of me, and I'm trying to make a play on these two games. At this point, I only need three total games for a complete Nintendo 64 collection, counting these two games. Is this stuff for sale? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, just got a little interesting. I, I, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, if we're talking about completing somebody's collection, I mean, you know. He's going to sell these to me out of his personal collection because basically it's collectors helping out collectors. Um, he understands how close I am. He understands how bad I want these. You need it to complete well, your collection. It's, it's a good game, though. I understand that. That's a really good game. I mean, how much? All right. I mean, they're both in good shape. This one retails for around 40 The other one's like a $15 game or so, so I'd do... Mm, 35 for the pair. Jay's over here, like, wishy-washy, I, I don't know, and I'm just like, dude. If he's gonna be kind enough to sell me out of his own personal collection, um, the least I could do is not insult a guy and be like, well, I need it cheaper. At this point, I'm just debating, okay, do I want to wait? Do I want to try to run across them at a flea market somewhere for a few bucks? Or do I just pick them up now because they're in front of me, mark them off the list, and look for that last game? Thinking. How cheap can you be to not take that deal? Ah! What are you thinking that's, about? That's pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. I'm trying to hook you up. Good lord. <laughs> oh. make it, now you have to make All him right. kiss the dog. I'll do Wait it. a minute. Make him kiss the dog. <laughs> With the purchase of these two games, I'm down to needing one Nintendo 64 game for a complete collection. Basically, I got what I remember playing growing mm -hmm. up, and now it's like, ah, uh, gotta get more. Wow. After that, it's a few label upgrades and then variants and boxes, and you're never done. I was able to get uh, the bro price and and pick up some stuff that I didn't have, so that was that was really freaking awesome and appreciated uh, Norm's connection for uh, hooking us up with that. Kiss All right, dog. one more left Kiss now. Kiss the dog. No, I'm not kissing <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Time to head home. It was a blast coming up here. It was a blast hanging out with Norm. Didn't find find a whole lot, but hey, we got to hang out with Norm. You got winter games, Days. man? Yeah. You got winter games? Yeah. 
<laughs> Why not? It's a horrible game, man. I'm glad Billy and Jay came came to Kansas City. I think hey, we had a really good time. Adam, we yeah. need to take off because we got a long oh, yeah, road yeah. ahead of us. So thank thanks you. for thanks for coming by. I'm sure you guys had to drive all the way across like the city to get over here. Thanks a lot to me. So. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So Adam and I are heading upstairs from the basement to to leave, and I hear Billy, Jay, and Chris laughing, like giggling. What just happened? We're still at Adam's hand left yet. It's been a fart fest. <laughs> Billy, came, Billy came up here and farted. And then Chris was like, what the f***? And then he did it. <laughs> Chris is sitting there chastising Billy about farting in another man, another man's house. He lets one rip. <laughs> what did you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what happened? I'll we'll explain it to you later. <laughs> he farted. <laughs> think something hilarious happened, but Billy just farted. <laughs> then Chris got mad at him for farting, then he farted himself. And then they're all just sitting around laughing about it, like it's the funniest thing to ever happen. So now they're farting in stereo. And by the way, they're in, they're in somebody else's home, by the way. It's farting in their living room. Uh, you guys are cracking uh, up that much about that. Uh, it was Billy, and then me, and now he's lost his mother. <laughs> and then they walk up into it. <laughs> How do you explain to somebody, oh, we're laughing because we're in our pants in your house, you know? Oh. Hey. We're still inside his house. I was wondering why, why you guys were cracking up up there. It's just because one of you farted. <laughs> no, I'm like, yeah, I'm never coming back. Can't anywhere. It's not normal in any way. What's wrong with these guys? <laughs> it's one wacky game show. <laughs> Oil up and hit the gym with me. So we're going to suffer through probably like around a hundred degree Texas heat to go to a flea market that's an hour and a half away, one that we've never been to before. It's hot as freaking nuts out here. It is so freaking hot out here. I don't know what the actual temperature is, but I swear it feels like it's 110 degrees out here right now. These places are, are not full. It really does seem like half these vendors aren't, aren't here, or they packed up early because we got here late. Uh, I wanna be with you night and day. Oh, hey, what are these paper things? Destroy All Humans Strategy Guide. I love Destroy All Humans. That game was great. Um, I wish they would make a new one, and not an HD remake, make a brand new Destroy All Humans game for current gen. Okay, finally a booth with some video games here. Unfortunately, I have everything, except for these Lynx games, which I'm not too interested in. I run across those every day in the wild. Two of them are racing games and one's a sports game. Where are you at on these? These right here, these uh, are? $5 a piece. $5 a piece? Five dollars a piece for these Lynx games, and this just ain't happening. I'd like to get these, but not at $5 a piece, no way. I mean, they're, the racing games. So I'm going to ask if he'll do five dollars for the, the three games total. I'm interested, but not at five a piece. Uh, would you do five total for him? Just and I say that only because it's soccer and a couple of racing games, and uh, they're just not. Doyle, well, the, these little games there. They're just that handheld uh, Atari. I wouldn't even do a dollar over five dollars for these. Maybe six. I'd do five dollars total on the on three of them if you want to make five bucks. Okay. Thanks, man. Three more Lynx games for my Lynx collection, which is extremely sparse because we never run across Lynx games. This heat is getting to us. Um, at one point or another, we're all starting to get a little aggravated with each other. The official temperature today is hot as f And yes, that is an official term of measurement with dealing with many things, distance, far as um, temperature, hot as Okay, next flea market. 
this this place looks like a shell of a flea market. All right, so we're at the second flea market. Uh, this is much smaller, but I think everyone's ready to go. It's just too freaking hot. So we asked one of the first guys that we come up to if he's got any video games, and apparently he has some. And he says, you know what? I have a Nintendo 64 at home with a stack of games for it. Is that for sale? Yeah, I'll bring it all up here tomorrow if you want to stop by. We live, we live in Arlington. That's no problem. All right. He says, no, I'll send someone to go get them. Great, even perfect. I don't know what all kind of games are in there. All right, nothing else a minute here. A little bit, you'll go get them and bring it up. So we're going to go look at the rest of the flea market and hopefully, hopefully we'll deliver on them. So we checked out the rest of the flea market, well at least what vendors were lurking around. No games, found some toys, but you'll see that on another show. We're gonna check in with the first vendor and see if he got those 64 games or not. We uh, basically have a YouTube show documenting us going around looking for all video games. There's video games. There's 16 games in the bottom. Let's see what we got. We got a shelf or something to set this on. Um, the lot's good. The lot, well, the lot's a little bit dirty, but that don't mean it doesn't work. You got a price in mind on any of this? I ain't even thought about it. I'm waiting on you. Wow. you tell me something. Pretty dirty, pretty dirty. Huh? Oh, I know dirty been in stores. But my grandkids played them until they put them in there. Here you go. I, uh, I need this. I don't know that much. Yoshi story. Uh, it's actually side scrolling, and so you don't have to worry about that N64 muddy, really crappy 3D look. And it reminds me a lot of Yoshi's story, which I love. Or <laughs> Yoshi's <laughs> Yoshi's Island on Super Nintendo, which I love. Totally getting this. There's some good quality Nintendo 64 titles in here, like Donkey Kong, Mario 64, Mario Kart. What do you give me? You give me for all of it. That's what I'm thinking. What do you think? What do you think, sir? I'm not sure. 16 game, give me 30 bucks for everything. I give you 20 bucks in a soda. Take it the crap with you, you can have it. 20 bucks. 20 bucks, deal. Thanks, sir. It's all in sweet tea right over there and you owe me one. Yes, sir, I'm going right now. <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time that we've... Uh, man, I don't really care. I'm, I'll get you, no, I'm a man of my word. I'm gonna go get you unsweet tea right now. All right, man. Since, uh, since his 64 collection is complete, I guess this is all mine. I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think I so? I think that's how it works. Bullshit. That's exactly how it works. What if he has upgrades? So Melvor 64 back in the day is what we played all our wrestling games on. And he freaking loved Mario 64 on that system. During the 64 era, um, I had a place with Jay. Um, actually, Jay moved into my apartment. Uh, and so did Dodongo and so did like 12 other people. Unfortunately, it got stolen uh, from whoever, I don't know. It ended up missing, so he hasn't had one since. It wasn't surprising when stuff of mine started disappearing, uh, like half my 64 games, uh, like stuff like my Weezer CDs. Was that, that wasn't, was, was it 20 for the games or for everything? The, every game. You bought it all. We're, oh, okay, I'm, well then I'm, that's I'm, mine then. Yeah, that's an easy one. I'm totally getting a 64. And it's dirty, dude. It works. Hey, that's... Oh, you're going to have to clean it out, dude. That's God, not a... Man, I think that's literally the dirtiest controller I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's been in storage. Super Mario 64. Uh, this game, by far, is, 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 is the game that I've had the most fun playing. Um, without question. Um, people ask me what my favorite game is. I say Mario 64 without even thinking, uh, because it is. We've been doing this for how long? And he just now is like, guys, can I have an N64? We've run across him so often, I, whatever. Dude's brain dead half the time. He's not the smart one. I do not have a 64, I do now. Never beat. I never beat Ocarina time because I got halfway through the game and then somebody stole it. <laughs> One of Dodongo's friends. Uh, I got it again, started playing through, got about halfway through it again and it ended up missing. So I've still to this day never beat the game. I'm actually glad because Yoshi's Story and Earthworm Jim 3, uh, or I don't have either of those. So um, I'm just glad that we actually came to the flea market. There you Thank go, you, sir. Man. 
Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Yeah. Apparently, while I was gone, Melvor claimed it, which I'm fine with, because he doesn't have a Nintendo 64, um, and that's the way that's the way it works around here. If someone someone has something, it goes down to the next person in line. We've done as much walking around in 100 degree heat as we possibly can right now. It is time to go home. So while we're filling up with gas, I check my Twitter and uh, huh, something's happened that never happened before. You know, when we're out videotaping. We run across people and sometimes they'll ask, who are you? We'll say game chasers. Well, in this particular instance, somebody apparently found me on Twitter, followed the game chasers, and proceeded to send me a message that we had missed some gaming related stuff at the first flea market we were here today. Flea market's already closed down. We've already gone down the road about half an hour or so. Um, we're coming back tomorrow. Fire in the Sky took place in Arizona. And then of course Roswell. So we're back here on day two at this flea market. Yeah, so now it's time to see if this guy actually has all this stuff that this other dude was message messaging us about, or if he was just trolling us and wanted us to waste more time and gas coming out. Sure enough, we asked the gentleman, do you have any video games? And he goes right into the back. And he just starts pulling out boxes of stuff. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, hey now. Atari. Might if we pull that out? Take a, take a look. look at it. Right off the bat, this dude pulls out a box with a bunch of Atari games, uh, mainly 7800 stuff, some 2600 stuff. It's factory sealed. Yeah, we collect all this stuff. Oh, nice. Look at that. He pulls out a boxed 7800. I mean, this thing looks mint. The, for being buried, it looks freaking mint. There's stuff here. And it just keeps going and going. He pulls out a Fairchild F, one of the very first video game consoles ever made. The first to use interchangeable ROM carts. I've got a printer for a TRS-80. Do you want a printer? <laughs> Not a printer, oh, but maybe. I got uncommon console pretty sure he pulled everything that he might have i do hear him looking more though that's my book excellent holy crap guys he pulls out a box of trs 80 games i'm a trs 80 fan we had one growing up I don't have a whole lot of games for it. I have, I don't know, maybe five or six. Well, this is a box of about 16 or 17. Blade Predator. Why did we grow up with a TRS-80? Because that's what my mom bought. The Radio Shack TRS-80 put the world of color computing into your home. That was our first computer, because uh, we couldn't afford anything fancier than that. I'm positive that's the reason. And there's more. The color computer is an educational aid, a home management tool. My mom, well, she's a gamer, always has been, um, as long as we can remember anyways. I had a blast. Some of those are my favorite games up to this point. Um, I remember very fondly something like Madness and the Minotaur. It's a text-based game. There was another one called Bedlam. Um, those games were especially fun because you did have to use your imagination. Megabug was the game. Megabug is not in here, but I have a copy of Megabug. And Melbourne now has a copy of Megabug. I found one for him in, in uh, Virginia. And the funny thing is, is we had that for a really, really long time. We boxed it up after we got a new one, you know, threw it in the closet somewhere. And of course, like everything else, we don't know what happened to it. Well, this box here, a lot of this had not been opened. I mean, to see that. They're all brand new, should be from there on down, just the top ones. Just the artwork alone makes me interested in these things. This is cool. This is very cool. So what are you thinking, sir? What I'm thinking on this box, 500. I'm out on this one. Would you be willing to sell any individually? Depends on what you're in the rest of paying for. Okay. Yeah. Best case scenario, with most of these games, you're looking at probably 10 to $15 a piece retail and that's probably only because they're sealed. Yeah, I'll let you have it right there for twenty dollars. Twenty bucks? Uh -huh. Okay. Jay has one, found one in Kenny's place years and years and years ago. This thing is just collecting dust. I wouldn't mind just 
getting it and picking it up just to have a spare. What about the, uh, the box of Atari? Uh, Atari, we'll need uh, $100 on that. $100? Yeah. Okay. And the TRS games? Oh man, I think. Uh... So he's got about 17 TRS 80 games here, one or two that are still sealed. About $50 problem. Anytime someone says 50 bucks, no matter what it is, my butthole kind of puckers a little bit. <laughs> What would you do uh, individually? Buy the piece. Buy the piece. When you run across a lot like this of obscurity, you have to get it, in my opinion. Well, I don't really want to pay $50 for all those games. I definitely don't want to pay five a piece. There's only a few that I want. Well, here's, the, here's the thing. We never run across them, and you don't know. Like Some of those could be really hard to find. I've never seen them. I've never seen some of those, even when we do run across them. Oh, you see that star one. Um, Arkanoid, some of the gen more generic ones, but I've never seen like Robocop and Predator and stuff like that. The thing with TRS-80, there's less of a market for that than there is for Atari stuff. However, while there's not really a market for it, you don't really run across the stuff too often. So taking that into consideration, I guess it's not horrible. 250 a game, right? I mean, two bucks, that's, that's what I always say. So let's just add 50 cents to the, the end of that. What about for both this and that? Uh... Yeah, 50. I can do $60. All right. Okay, so the deal gets a little bit sweeter. Not a bad score. Not bad, not bad. Curiosity, did you, did you buy this like when it first came out? This uh, first? No, not that one. Okay, just the Atari stuff? Yeah, just the Atari stuff. Okay. Bought all this. Nowadays, when we go to the flea market, we're coming across hoops and silent service on NES, but I mean, how often do you run across TRS-80 games in a Fairchild F? Yeah, it was worth the time coming out here, because I got a TRS-80 games now, and we got a spare Fairchild Channel F hanging around. It is so freaking hot out here. I said you had the raunchiest butthole that I've had the misfortune to ever encounter. I'm sick of that foul-smelling stench that emanates from you, dude. It's freaking disgusting, man. It's not funny, <laughs> dude. <laughs> We are Emerald Coast Con in the Florida Panhandle out at Fort Walton Beach. Uh, I love Florida, I love the beach, all that crap. The trip has been a bunch of Melbourne and Billy bitching at each other, <laughs> like an old married couple. Uh, the farting has been minimal, believe it or not. Uh, but when Billy does fart, it smells like a dead asshole is what it smells like. I love the ocean. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's underwater civilizations down in there, dolphins, sentient dolphin, dolphins that have probably migrated here from another planet, who knows. No, 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 never, never, never. Well, that was fun. Can't ask for a better, a better location for a hotel. You know, what if the dolphins went to war with the Atlanteans? Wow, it makes you think. I ain't fucking with no dolphins, I'll tell you that much. The dolphins came from Sirius and they were bought from the Atlanteans and they're here to watch us. Yes. Here's the deal, this is what I'm thinking. If you give me a history lesson, acting like a gangster, I'll give you that game for free. A history lesson, acting like a gangster? Jay and Buzzy from Bad Graphics Gamers are here, and they've ended up being one of our more uh, favorite vendors to go to. Bad Graphics Gamers are, well, they're YouTubers first of all, and their bit is uh, kind of making people do stupid human tricks for discounts at their booth. How far is someone willing to go for an old video game? <laughs> Well, I mean, if it's, we're gonna give people a discount, it's gotta come at, you know, entertainment. Pure entertainment. Free, yeah, yeah, so. I you ain't gonna do it. Man, I don't even know the history of bases <laughs> loaded. If you wanna collect all of the baseball games on NES, uh, Bad Graphics Gamers have a copy of Bases Loaded 4, which is a fairly uncommon baseball game. I've been told you go to the gym, you, you guys can do a little 10 push up race. Ooh. 10 Man. push up race with who? Oh, me? Jared. Oh, I gotta do it? Jay. We like old Norman, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna make him work for his discount, you know. Yeah. Nothing around yeah. here comes for free. 
Do I think Norm's athletic? I mean, based on what? I do push-ups every day, so I feel like I can get to 10 fairly quickly. Three, two, one, go. That was that was a that was a, that was a tie. Like you couldn't, you couldn't tie any more than that. I think I was getting more of an extension on my push-ups. Uh, my form might have been maybe a tad cleaner, but you know, I'm not real sure. It, that's surprising because Norm's been known to hit the gym a couple times too. He oils up and hits the gym. I hear. I just oil up and hit the gym with me. Come on, I've done enough. All right, we'll give it. We'll give it to him. It's good. Anyway. <laughs> Good competition, yeah, sir. He was going to get the discount regardless if you won or lost. We just wanted to see, you know, we wanted a good challenge. We wanted to laugh. That's fine. I got bases loaded for. You're a gym rat. <laughs> he was keeping up with you. He was. I know, I know. All right, now it's Billy's turn to do a stupid human trick. You want a 10 for this? Yes. And you want a what, 7 for that? Yep. All right. Now, two things I'm seeing here that I totally want are a River City Ransom box and a TMNT box, uh, both on original NES. Now, the significance of this is I love the first Turtles game on NES. I currently own the box, but it is in horrible, horrible shape. This is a pretty minty box, and uh, I, that remains to this day one of my favorite games on NES. Me uh, and Chris have a lot of memories growing up playing that game. That's a really good game. It's not the best game, but I love it. It's, and I can never beat it. To this day, I've still never beat it, despite trying probably over a hundred times to play the game all the way through. I'll do a push up with you sitting on my back. If, if, I, can, if I can do it, if I can do okay, it, okay. 10 for both. If I can't, 15 for both. He's actually got these boxes, these empty boxes, marked pretty cheap, but I still want to do a trick and try to get them cheaper if I can. I'm trying to think here, I'm trying to think here. Billy's pretty strong, so how about, can you do two? Can you do two? Two. That's my rebuttal. So all I gotta do is do two push-ups with Jay on my back. I think that that's gonna be pretty easy. I, I can do that. I think my tops would probably be 20. I don't think I could do 20. I could do two. <laughs> Straddle his hair like a bull. <laughs> Get him, Bronco. Nice. Nice. All right, sweet. 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 I'm assuming he did do it. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't be talking about it, because if he failed, he wouldn't put that on camera. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't surprise me, you know? Billy's, Billy's not weak. I get the boxes for $10, which honestly is a pretty big steal for both of these, especially with the condition that they're in. That, was, that had to be one of the better Ooh. deals we've gotten, and I feel like for like a, a highway a robbery, hefty discount that big, he should have to lifted a hefty feller like me. He should have had Buzz on his back. Yeah, he, he wouldn't have been. <laughs> He'd thinking have been this. struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say he wouldn't have thought he got a good deal then. You think he has back problems now? <laughs> You missed it, Jay. He did two push-ups with me on his back. I was riding him like a bronco. <laughs> he's got a little beefy, hasn't he? Yeah. He wanted to do one. I knew he's too strong for that. Right after he tried to claim he had a hurt arm. <laughs> Look at this cool motherfucker right here. <laughs> we already, we already that, talked about did him. That retro yeah. liberty. <laughs> That's Aaron. Cool guy. <laughs> Disney game chasers. <laughs> the Disney us. <laughs> we got Norm talking shit. <laughs> it's that lame duck. So the bad graphics guys, you know, they're they're sports fans. They like football. Throw me the rock. Throw me the rock. We <laughs> <laughs> got in the middle of route. <laughs> talking trash. That's funny. We've just kind of been talking all weekend how it'd be kind of neat to maybe do something on the beach, a football game on the beach or something like that. He's gonna be trying to hit a block and Billy's gonna be 30 yards <laughs> upfield. Why don't we place a bet on this entire game? Because honestly, I think that me, Jay, and Norm can take these assholes in a heartbeat. So we we can <laughs> if there's no stakes on the line then you know somebody yeah. might not try their hardest but when you got stakes on the line everyone's you get you know, the cut, best out cut of throat cut throat. exactly so what are the what are the terms yeah you got to agree with the terms what are the terms <laughs> you were you were running your mouth bad yesterday. I believe, I'm, I'm still running my mouth i believe it's uh 
$150 in store credit. If we beat them, they're gonna give us $150 credit at their booth. That's a lot. I know. That is. That's why we don't wanna lose. That's why I'm I, wanted, I wanted to read Buzz, all, all, Buzzy all day has been like, maybe 150 was too much. <laughs> all, all day he's been saying that, and I was like, you can't go back on this. I'm willing to take the chance. I mean, it's it's two young bucks like ourselves against some, <laughs> some ruggedy <laughs> old. Some old cowboys. <laughs> That's what you want to return shout out video? Yeah. If they beat us, then we have to give them a shout out on our channel. I know this is pathetic, but we're just trying to get our YouTube channel built up just a little bit. So I thought if we could get a plug for a little <laughs> little victory at a football game, it'd be well worth it. Yeah. Shout out video like a solo. Hey guys, you should go check out this channel. Shout out video. Yeah, the game chasers can't really do a shout out yeah. video. <laughs> we could. If you if you uh, make it in the terms. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess you can do whatever the f you want. Yeah, but that's not really shit you guys do. Now that's not gonna happen. Like even if we lose, that's still not going to happen. So we better win this thing. Hey, you realize while doing this episode, they're getting a shout out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go blur out their faces. So we're gonna win anyways. <laughs> so I, gonna... I give it percentage. I say we got a 35% chance of winning. Just yeah. I'm being real. 35%? Look at these fucking idiots. Hey, it's, it's once in a lifetime you get yeah. to hang out on the beach just tackling other dudes in the dark. That's or even no clock stoppage. All right. I, I feel like we're going to game. Yeah. Right. Okay. These, these two guys are, are younger uh, and look like they're more athletic than Billy and Jay. I don't think they stand a chance, actually. I think there's a, a very, very high percentage that one of them is going to sprain their ankle uh, or break their face on the sand. This episode of Game Chasers is brought to you in part by LaunchBox, the perfect gaming front end for your PC, home theater, or arcade cabinet. Check out the app below. Just getting my stretch on. We're gonna kick some ass. <laughs> you don't f with the Jedi Master. <laughs> Jay and Buzzy, they were trying to figure out who else they would get. Now, unfortunately, it looks like they've gotten somebody who can kind of hold their own athletically. I think it's a sure win for bad graphics gamers here. Um, oh, yeah. And John Michael. Oh, I, think, I think we might win this. We're seasoned vets. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Like, really, I can throw this ball. I can throw this ball over that ocean into Texas. In this? I think these meat wallets can't throw a football as far as whatever. <laughs> we're, t we're tearing them down. I I'm pretty confident they're in our ability to win. Because look at Buzzy. Look at, look at, look at him. He ain't. And they keep hyping up Buzzy as that he's like Joe Montana or something. I'm not seeing it. The game chasers actually, actually do have Norm with them. Um, and that is, I think, their only saving grace and their only chance of winning this thing. Norm is younger and more fit than both of you guys. Oh. Norm climbed a mountain, okay? I climbed a mountain. Yeah, like 45 minutes later. So? And then the other one didn't even make it. Freaking pathetic, man. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's true. And he, he's silent. He's silent right now because he knows it's true. I think I'm a, apparently the official referee, timekeeper, and uh, the no nonsense, no nonsense haver. I will have no nonsense. What? The referee? Yeah, man. Yeah. Give him the reach around. All right. Yeah, for sure. Cut. Two hands. Incomplete. Incomplete. We're playing at night. Um, this makes it obviously. This makes it more difficult. Your depth perception is gone when it's that dark out. So it's hard to anticipate when the ball is going to get to you. It looks like a little UFO <laughs> flying around. I don't know how many times I can scream. It's not a god UFO. Second quarter. Okay, second quarter. No one scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Jay is huffing and puffing like he just smoked 10 packs of cigarettes. Billy's coming off an Achilles surgery, <laughs> so we have like this injury riddled team <laughs> that can't run. I don't know how we're going to win this game, but I think we can. <laughs> I'm not drawing anything up, but I want them to think we are. Okay. We're resting, is what we're doing. <laughs> Freaking pathetic, man. Oh! This is the old long ball. 
Come on, bro. First points are scored. I think we may have underestimated bad graphics here. Okay, let me be more specific. Not Buzzy, because fuck him. I think we may have underestimated Jay. Little Jay's <laughs> little legs. <laughs> His little chihuahua legs aren't keeping up with you. It's, it's, it's infinitely more difficult to run on sand than it is grass. <laughs> Did, was that a fart? Yeah. Everyone's staring at this UFO. That's not a UFO. I'm trying to get this through their head. This is ridiculous. <laughs> It's like the stupid chasing the dumb. Yeah. Nobody's good in this game, not one good play. Well, one good play happened, but it was a fluke. It was a fluke. Defensively, we're, we're just, we're pummeling them. We're, we're stopping them. Okay, this is good, because Buzzy can't hold you. Do we want to try a double end around? No, okay, let's not get too fast. Okay, okay. The ball, it's hard to see the ball. It is. Just short dumps. Yeah. Go, 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 go. He's got it. Score first down. Yeah. First down. Two crossing, right? They get confused on the crossing. Yes, they do. Hey, Joe, Joe Same five. thing. Joe five. Five. Joe five. five. All right. Joe, Joe five. five. They come out like the flash. Boom, we score. It's 1-1 right before halftime. It was a beautiful play. B Billy is is basically our tight end. He's like our Gronk. Let's uh, take 10 or 15. Yeah, we'll back. come back okay. for the second half. Halftime! Half so look, we went into this thing thinking complete blowout. That we were gonna just destroy them. Uh, you know, it's 1-1. They're holding their own. They're doing good. Both teams have had problem moving the ball. Um, we're playing in the dark, we're playing on sand. It's 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 not as easy as it looks. It's fun as f but it's not as easy as it looks. So. Man, I didn't realize I'd be playing on the geriatric team. <laughs> Freaking Billy and Jay. <laughs> no, they, they, they're like old, the old and wise players, and I'm the young buck. But we're doing good, it's evenly matched. I got caught being lazy. I was playing safety, and they, they ran a little, uh, trick play and I got lazy. I just didn't, I quit. Billy, Billy, Billy is burning rubber right by me. They're lacking out there. They've got to pull trick plays out of their ass. <laughs> get you when they're not even looking. <laughs> Stab you in the middle. <laughs> We've been bamboozled, horn swoggled out there. But these seasoned vets, they, they're on their hands and knees after every play, they're so tired. <laughs> Is that, is that the names? The names of the teams? I didn't know that. Joe's and I predicts, yeah. <laughs> it's 1 1. We're about to start the half. I don't think they stand a chance, actually. Third quarter begins! Is that how they do it? You step two steps in front of me and threw the ball. I find the line, it's an illegal forward pass. He is just giving us unfair calls. And then we find out he's a fan of the game chasers. I know, man. He was working for him. I'd say interference, replay the down. Interference, interference replay the down. Call the Jets he's talking, we talked about not hitting people at the first play of the game. game. That's not interference. Dude, I, 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 fucking I don't see that. I'm calling it straight down the middle. And my friend's on their team, so like, if I was going to call it for anybody, wouldn't I be calling it for them? I didn't hit him. I didn't hit him. He cheats all the time. <laughs> He's a natural born cheater. It's called fucking lockdown defense. You, I mean, the purple people eaters, you think Billy J and Norm. And that's pretty much what's going on here. What lockdown are you defense. About? <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude? That's that's why that's why they've only had one point because of our 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 D. I don't think we know what we're doing on defense. This fk ass over here says those guys are way way better than you guys. Much more athletic than y'all. Then how the f are we holding them to one? No hand. No oh, hand. Oh, Touchdown. Oh, wow. Nice. I just uh, 
bamboozled all the defenders, ran, ac ran across them, ran around them, scored a touchdown too for old bad graphics. Damn, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking pathetic, man. And of course, old Buzz comes through with a strike for a touchdown, and we take the lead. I don't have high hopes for us tying the game here. All right, we, we have this in the bag. There's 30 seconds left in the game. There's no way they're gonna do a Hail Mary and, and trot down the field on us. You score Jay, anyway. No. no. There's right. one minute. One minute. No, last, you got one minute to get down there. Okay, got it, last drive. Bad Graphics Gamer Jay is so confident they will win. He agrees to give us an untimed final drive, and if we score, we win the game. Bad Graphics Gamers J is letting that competitive spirit get to him a little bit. Give it to him. Just one minute. We got it. One, one drive. One drive. We win if we right. don't score. Okay. Deal. Right. That's it. If he dies, this is it. He dies. He dies. He dies. Puddle. Puddle. To be honest, what it is is when I compete or whatever, I like when it's real tight and you just barely beat another person. So I wanted to to have a real tight game and win. I like my, no, that's really why I did it. Now I'm feeling good. Because when people make a bet like that, it usually backfires. This is like what you dream of. Oh. Beating these idiots on the beach. Ten yep. in, okay? All right. If you're one-on-one -on -one with Buzzy, just f***ing burn it. Let's go, bitches. Break. I'm playing quarterback and I'm driving us down the field. Well, now we're in a do or die situation where we have to score. All right, it's third and goal and we're not stopping them. We literally have two plays left to score. I just can't get it out of my mind how big of an idiot you are. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you give him this extra chance? We had the hey, game one. I, when I pitch to you, I'm gonna run out this Woo! way. Block right, block right, block yeah. right! No! Touchdown! Yes. That's the game! Right. The over. That's the game! You're right here! I swear to God. Let go line. there! Extra he go there! He was on the line! Look at the sand! Look at the sand! Look at the sand! Look, no, 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 no! Look at the sand and look here. This is where the ball is. Yeah, but if no one touched him, he can die then. No, Buzzy was on top of him. Billy takes the pitch and hits Jay with a with a toss by the pylon. Touchdown! Touchdown! I catch it and I kind of stumble into the end zone. I got him. We won again. But his knee was down. But yeah. Yeah, you can see it clears down. So, in the of sand. course, Jay, Jay's in the sand digging. He's like, oh, uh, hey, he's this is digging a knee print. Well, this like, is my knee print right here in the goal line. Is. 150 bucks, <laughs> pay up. If we're playing college rules, he's down. But we're not playing college rules. We're playing beach, beach rules. rules. He's fucking rules. live, and he wasn't touched until the touchdown happened. You saw that from back there. Honestly, it doesn't matter because the referee said it was a touchdown. End of story. Buzzy and Jay, you lost. We're right there now. Right there. I, right I thought you had the green diaper marker. Diaper dicks lose. <laughs> no, the fuck it's I hard to, yeah, dude. You know, it's hard to admit sometimes as a man, <laughs> in your manhood, uh, that was, that diaper dicks lose. That was good. Yeah. That was a good, game. good game. That was fun. Hey, that was good game. Game. Man. But Buzzy, that was your man. Why, why, you why, why would you give him a free drive? They had like so if you would have came down and scored, it would have been a tie score. But we were so cocky that we thought we had it. We thought it was like Revis Island. And then he got pissed at me. He's like, what the f we won. already won. And he's a competitor. If I were to say I felt anything less than satisfied right now, I'd be lying. I was running all over the place, like touching these guys. Don't take that out of context. By the way. <laughs> good job. Hey, that was a good throw, man. That just was a good throw. We didn't. We didn't plan. I was, I was we so didn't. salty. You got past the goal line. I was lying. We didn't plan <laughs> for that for that trickery. Yeah. The hardest part with throwing is when Jay had his shirt off and I noticed his nipples were so little. Scored with 35 seconds left and my diaper dick of a teammate decided he was gonna give them a final drive and ultimately that, that costed us the game. Uh, the game was over on their last drive, technically. Time ran out, but I kind of let him finish the drive and then that guy gave him another minute to go a score a touchdown. So it's all on Jay, to be quite honest with you. All on Jay. <laughs> Blame the ref all you want. Motherfucker 
have made a touchdown on the last play. Shouldn't have happened. Uh, don't know how this happened, actually. They scored a touchdown, so we could have just rolled over and died in that game. But, you know, we, we fought back. I'll give credit to Jay, surprisingly. No, you're not deserving of anything. Of anything. How many times do I have to say that? The fact that you won still doesn't mean that you deserve anything. <clears throat> I got up, I heard everyone yelling touchdown, and then I looked, I was like, oh, f I'm fast. I'm in. So, so they got $150 credit. Don't, isn't, isn't part of that yours? Don't you deserve Yep, I get one third of that. Team effort. Yep. But uh, they were they were telling me I can only get like a five dollar game, so <laughs> or, yeah, I, I gotta argue that. Look at my contract. <laughs>
I have that one. I mean, Prince of Persia, it's got that, that unique sort of like, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. That, that, that girl's graphics, they're, they're more animated. Um, now games that like, oh, shut up. Like, okay, I know I'm not good at explaining things, but it, it's kind of like, um, I loved Out of This World and Flashback on Super Nintendo. It kind of has still has that same type of style. Beach Bowl 2. We have to come up with a, we might have to do like four on, if we're doing a large field like that, four on four. Or... We think we need a little more players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had fun at this convention, had fun hanging out with Norm, bad graphics gamers. They have a great YouTube channel. So I guess right now I'm giving them their shout out despite losing and totally not deserving it. Man, this trip has been pretty freaking amazing. We get to come out to Florida, stayed in a hotel right on the beach, had this epic beach bowl battle, and that's what we call it now, beach bowl. Revenge, we need revenge. We need we're, to get them back. We're gonna have to call in a different, we need more people. A different ref, referee though, right? New referee, more people. Uh. So when you think of video game players, you don't really associate you know, gamers with sports. This was a really fun event because it was all of us together. We all like video games, but we all enjoy sports too. You know, I played I played sports growing up, and I think it was very important to me growing as a person because it's team team based activity. You learn to get along with people. You learn, you learn to pick each other up, um, and it, it goes hand in hand with video games. Florida, we're gonna have to say goodbye to you, and it's off to Greg's in Houston. But before that, we're gonna go try to hit up some flea markets on the way out. Ours wasn't really a castle, it was just a giant penis in the sand. So we're currently in Florida right now. We are at the Emerald Coast Con this weekend, and we're making our way home, and we spot a flea market on the side of the road. We have to go to it. Anytime I pass a thrift store or a flea market, I have to stop. If I don't, then I actually feel I feel bad, like I feel like I missed something. Missing everything inside of it. Went to this one bookstore inside here and hidden, tucked away like it was a book, is a video game. And it's not a book. It looks like a book, but it's the Star Trek Rebel Universe. It's a five inch, five and a quarter inch floppy drive and it works on IBM computers. I mean, I don't have anything to play it on, but it's still just freaking cool just for, I mean, the novelty of it and the, the artwork and all that other stuff. So I definitely have to pick this thing up. And what's awesome about it is that the seller thinks it's a book, so I'm getting it for like 50 cents. Star Trek socks. All this would have been on camera, but Belfort was off doing something other than videotaping us. I know that much. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what you're talking about. What did you get? So one of the last booths that we find here at this flea market, um, it has some games. There's a ton of games here, but it's not all dedicated to video games. It's not a resale shop. It's games thrown in with random junk. That is usually a really good sign. It's usually a good sign that the games are going to be cheaper. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I did. I don't see us buying anything. Everything that we're picking up here is literally twice, hell, twice eBay, and eBay's high. A loose copy of Little Mermaid on the Genesis. It's like a two dollar game for thirty behind the glass. Are you serious? This is not even how you do things. Missing the top. All right, so I am discouraged about the pricing of this place, but I am seeing something here that does catch my eye. It's a Vic 20. It's one of the one of the older systems I don't have. We gotta see how much they're one for. But judging by everything else in here, it's probably going to be like three times as much as retail. I personally, and I know Billy does too. We like finding stuff that's pre Nintendo because. There was a lot of good stuff pre-Nintendo. You know, you had TRS-80s, you had VIC-20s, you had Ataris. Now the VIC-20 was the predecessor to the Commodore 64. So think how primitive the Commodore 64 is, was, well, this is even much more so. A lot of text-based games, a lot of adventure games. Um, still cool, I, I, don't, I don't have one. I would love to have one. And this thing is in the box. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games too.
35? I'm actually surprised it's it's that low. A little bit higher than I would want because it doesn't look like it has all the hookups and I, I mean I don't even know if the thing works. I can't test it or anything like that. Does it know if it works? I don't know. I'm probably gonna pass just because I, I don't know why. <laughs> Me being as cheap as I am, yeah, I'm not a player on this either. $30 isn't unreasonable. I was really considering it. That's not a terrible price at all. So go ahead and put in the comments. I'm trying to pick that up for $30. It was a good price. Anyone else might have picked it up if you're interested in that kind of thing, but you know. I'm probably stupid for not getting the VIC-20, but... Um Let's start going back towards Texas. We're gonna stop in Houston. It's a minor detour on our way home. I'm trying to blame everything on me. Give me the footage, I bet I find it. Okay, so we're gonna go check out a uh, Greg's. Actually, we're gonna go check out a storage unit. So Greg owns a store called Game Brothers in, in the Houston area. So we're meeting Greg here at his storage unit. Actually, he's always bragged to us. Well, wait, wait till you guys see what's in storage. So we're like, yo, we're gonna be passing through. Let's see what's in storage. No idea what the f is in most of this, dude. I wanted to see if Billy and Jay wanted anything, and I need to go through them for my second store, so they just happen to show up at the right time. Fuck! I got so much. But that's what I do all day, buy, sell, and trade, so it's starting to show. It's, it's insane. It's... I like that. That's cool. That brings back memories right there. <laughs> all right, already. I'm not going to do go. anything with it. Working at Blockbuster, this definitely holds a special place in my heart because I used to rent these things to people. Anything, any, <clears throat> anytime, any. Um, so I guess we just get started then, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, you can't... That's a really good game. Pick up a box and there's like dust and stuff. I think this stuff has been here since the 90s. Well, not really, but. What the fuck? Dude, you got his hands on it first. You know the law. Oh. Here. You're in on that? Maybe. What are you, what are you pressing this at? Just make a pile. All right. Right now, we just make a pile, a maybe pile of stuff that we want, and we'll see where he's at when it's all said and done. Might be able to sell that. Yeah. I didn't even know that was in here. Well, I keep saying that shit, obviously. I'm honestly, part of the game plan right now is to uh, find him a bunch of expensive shit he can sell in his shop and then use that as leverage later and make it sound like I made him, quote unquote, all this kind of money. Do you think that's gonna work? Doubt it, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> you really have no idea what's in here, do you? I just saw gold and I didn't know I had it. I'm grabbing that. I saw a lot of these. Oh, Sell yeah. them at a great price. That's why. So we're literally pulling out, you know, stuff that's easy sells, Mario's and Zelda's and things like that. And he's making a stack of his own, his own, I guess, maybe pile, stuff that he's gonna take back to the store and sell. Well, having them here is kind of a give and take thing. <laughs> because of course I'm gonna pay him and, you know, like in games and stuff for helping me out. I mean, that's a big help because I have only one person. I can't really go through all this like they are. They're knocking through it faster than I ever could have imagined. So, I mean, okay, so what's the story behind this? Is this stuff that's piled up from flea markets and stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Everything in here, even the Aliens arcade came from a flea market. Damn. I don't have any 3 video games, so uh, I'm gonna put that on my maybe pop. You don't need a Vader, Vader uh, 2600? Yeah. I'll just drop that on you. <laughs> this is fun. I wish we could do more of this. This actually reminds me of uh, some of the, the earlier episodes and some of the early on seasons, you know, going through people's attics, for instance. What the f man? Dude, I have no idea. Good God. <laughs> I come across Nintendo World Championships reproduction cartridge. Now, these things, when they were being sold online, $50, $60. I have one. Um, but I've seen people reselling these at conventions for 100 120 bucks. Well, that's the only way that any of us are going to have an NWC. We're not Pat. Repros of this are selling for hundred over 100 right now. Are you serious? Yeah. Thank you. Up until this point, I thought I had an idea of what I had. I didn't even, I was way off. Oh, big 
20 games. I'm running across the Big 20 games, and I passed on the Big 20. Uh, I'd still love to have the games because eventually I'll get the system. Billy and Jay, they're just picking out stuff that they don't have in their collections. It's not stuff that's super, super duper expensive, but it's not stuff that you see all the time either. Good fucking God, dude. What the fuck is wrong with you? A <laughs> gray variant. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I come across a gray cartridge Hydro Thunder. Now that game when it came out was blue. This is a cartridge variant. It's harder to find and it's actually way more expensive. I'm just doing my part and trying to help my friend Greg out here. All right, so now I'm a little intrigued. I'm coming across a game called Spiru. Spiru. I'm not gonna try to butcher it. I'll just write it down here, but it's on the Super Famicom. It looks actually pretty interesting from what I've seen of it. Well, I'm a floating head. Uh... He's not even looking. Yeah, he is. Bitch, I've already been through this shit. You've been through this box? Yes, I have. What was in there? <laughs> what was in that box you looked at? In which box? That, there you go. All right, so Tom Sawyer is a game that I don't have. I'm definitely gonna put on my media pile because I don't have it and I need it. And I've never even actually read the book. Now I assume the game's based on the book. And if it's not, then I don't know why would they, they would name it that, because that would be pretty uh, confusing, actually. Tom Sawyer, Tom, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry fuck. Huckle, Huckleberry Finn. Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, I read it in school, because they made me. What's wrong with these guys? <laughs> I'm digging, and I'm digging, and it's dirty, and it's dusty, and it's dirty, and dusty, and thirsty, and thirsty. Star Trek. Any video game that I come across that has Star Trek in the name, I'm going to be picking it up. Um, this one in particular, it's okay. You go around blasting Klingons and stuff. Um, I would say that my, from this era, my favorite game, uh, Star Trek related, is on the Vetrex. That's a really good game. Buck Rogers, Coleco. Okay, I run across a Buck Rogers on Coleco Vision here. I just want to see if anyone catches that, actually. <laughs> I'll do it again. Fucker, so you want to say it right? There's a ton of stuff to go through here. We're gonna be here all night. Luckily, Greg has nothing better to do. Well, he might actually have way better things to do, but. We found some Atari. <laughs> this is what's known as a double ender, kind of like a double ended dildo, except it's uh, games. There's a game on each side. There's the Chuck Norris one. You got that one? I have that one. You want it for your store or not? No? Zonox, they, they thought outside the box with their they're uh, thinking. Congo b, b bongo I think that's gonna go in my maybe pile. It's about a safari hunter who is after an ape named Congo. Now he's after this ape because apparently the dastardly ape set fire to his tent. So it's a mischievous ape that the safari hunter is now after. <laughs> Dude, just. You know why? You know why I'm big into Atari right now. One, Mike Matei. So lately, I've been seeing that Jay has been texting back and forth with Mike Matei, who is a big time Atari collector about Atari games. Mike Matei will send me a random text about some random game or a random label variant or something. Uh, I think I was saying like, you know, if you ever see um, such and such copy of this Atari game or this NES game, you know, pick me up a copy. I know Mike is going for like label variants on Atari, so that's been kind of my thing lately, which sucks because I'm buying five copies of the same freaking game. Jay's totally getting more and more into label variants, and I, I know damn well it's because Mike Matei and him have been texting about that. I'm glad that I did that because I think I enjoy collecting label variants. I think it's a sure it's a little bit of a nutty, crazy thing, but isn't isn't retro gaming in general? And basically, you know, he'll text me asking me, "Hey, have you heard of this game? What do you know about this game?" I'll do the same thing. You know, he's got his his list of games that he needs. You know, so I'm on the lookout for him. He would send me like a picture, like, "Oh, you know, I found like the green football, and like this is like the green football." 
and I'd be like, oh, I don't have the green f football, can you send me that? Because the one I have is like the yellow like label football, but then there's also the picture version of football. So it's like, I don't, first of all, I don't even like football in general. I'm not a sports guy. Like I'm never gonna play these, but I wanna own the cartridge cartridges because I want a complete Atari collection. I don't really get into the whole variant thing personally, but I, I can understand where, where some people might. So I kind of stopped collecting NES games because if I wanted, if I ever want to play an NES game, I could just borrow it from James. But then I became more obsessed with trying to get the uh, complete Atari collection, which I'm very close. Uh, I, got, I think I've got maybe 10 to 15 games left to get. Collecting for Atari reminds me of the old days when I can get games cheap. Two, it's cheap. It is cheap. No one gives a shit about it. Atari's fan base over the years has really died off. I mean, the Atari, along with the Intellivision, is literally my very first video game memories that I've ever had. Atari is a fun console to play. One of my my fondest video game memories is actually playing combat with my cousins. You know, with the tanks and stuff. I think playing Atari games today um, is still worth doing because there's so many good games. There was a beauty in the simplicity in the games. Uh, you know, we didn't have the technology to have all the fancy graphics and stuff, so they had to rely more on gameplay. Whereas nowadays, I think that can be overlooked and not the main focal point of a game. And that's why you play a game. It's a shame that Atari isn't as sort of remembered anymore. The Atari, and that whole generation uh, of consoles um, is, in my opinion, uh, somewhat underappreciated. I love personally collecting for Atari because I have this library on this system that years from now, and years and years and years, it's gonna be forgotten. But I'm trying to do my part to keep it alive. It just harkens back to a simpler time. Atari just kind of takes me back to those old days. That and Mike Matei. I, I love Atari, and I think Jay's collecting of uh, the retro labels is not a bad thing at all. I think, uh, keep doing it. Man, y'all got that dug out quick. Okay, so we're done here. We're gonna go to the second storage unit and see what we can find in there. Greg has another unit in this building Let's dig in. Arr. It's the hunt, it's that treasure hunt that's really just kind of drives us and you never know what you're gonna find. CDI games. This is stuff you just don't run across every day. Um, I like that kind of stuff. It's not stuff that's super, super duper expensive. Oh, stack of them. Dark Castle. Ooh, I'm in on that one. What? It's in my hand. I'm just saying I'm in on it. See, Stupid Jay's being Stupid Jay. Jay Z's like, oh, Billy wants it. It must be rare. That's why he's reaching in for it. I just want it because it sucks. Is there's no conspiracy. It's in my maybe pile. Is it in your maybe pile? It's in my hand. Is it in your maybe pile? Give me a second. Let me look. What the f you mean maybe pile? I got it. He's like, well, do you want it? I'm, I'm like, just, hang no, I'm, on. I'm let saying, me look. Let me look. I'm just saying, if you don't want it, or, and you ended up putting it down, then it's gonna go into my maybe pile. But you weren't even giving me the chance to put it down. You I was just, just letting you, you know. Were, you were just taking you know. it out of my hand. Just you know. Besides, I also wanted to look at it so I could determine whether or not I wanted it in my maybe pile. Mm, okay. Nah. Yeah, the problem with that is um, you get your grubby little meat hooks on things and you just think it's yours. My, my dick beaters? <laughs> yeah, that, as Chris would <laughs> say, your dick beaters. Common game. I'm seeing Mario paint the strategy guide. I freaking love the strategy guides for the Super Nintendo version era. Um, like the Mario Mania, the Super NES, the Game Boy ones, I love those things. Uh, I never had the Mario Paint one, but I do have a deep emotional connection to Mario Paint, the, the game itself. Salivating now, let's see what's in here. Something I'm finding here is Pac-Mania, but I think I already have it. Oh, you need a Pac-Mania? What? Yes, I do actually. I do need that. I have this. Nice. So Jay finds a Pac-Mania on the NES. 
and this is a Tengen game that I do not have. Would love to take this game home. So you saying I look like a f with short hair? Yeah, you look like a, a big time. Cause actually going through my uh, my Twitter earlier with some pictures from like when I first started Twitter, this picture of you with short hair, and you look like a fucking idiot. I did. Yeah. I look like a. What do you think? I think you look like an idiot with short hair. Yeah. Like, if you look like the biggest gummer pile, just stupid fool in the world. <laughs> you look pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> No goatees for you, though. Are you cutting your hair? I'm thinking about it, yeah. Cutting your hair? Thinking about it. So no goatees for you, and no short, no hair, short for hair for me. for you. For me. So basically, season one, us. No more season one, us. No more season <laughs> one, us, in other words, yes. Okay, so we're done here. Let's see what Greg wants for all this stuff. Well, I mean, where, where are you at on the CDI stuff? Yeah, that's probably gonna be a huge factor. Starting to go up in value a little bit. So I'm gonna cut up a deal on it though. I didn't spend much on it. Oh man, I don't even know what it's worth. Gotta be honest with you. It's about 750 bucks worth of CDI stuff. That's that no that's, no way. Well then you got an idea, don't you, Dick? <laughs> if I spent a lot of money on them, then I'd be very concerned about it. But I know I didn't. Oh. Well, there's there's ten of them. We got ten. There's of them. ten of them. All right, let's make sure. I don't even know to be honest with you. Let's make sure they're in there. If I forget about it, there's a reason for it. You know what I mean? It's for tar shit. I already threw this in for this poor man. Okay. I just Billy threw it on the ground like you a want dick. The tape? No, I can I, I can pass on that. Well, you're gonna pass on fifty cents because you know, that's probably where it's gonna be. <laughs> it's not gonna be much, dude. Throw it in the pile then. The, the maybe pile is piling up pretty pretty quickly here, but it's not high dollar stuff. Honestly, it's a bunch of dollar, two dollar items uh, for the most part. This is the gift pile. That's the gift pile. Why is that you the gift what, pile? You know let's just, let's just Cause it's mine. All the fucking trouble here. 50 bucks for everything, how about that? Uh oh, all right. No, no you bitch. That's yeah. not including that. That's not including that? That's not including that. Right, well, what do you want on this then? Do 65 with all that. You'd be crazy if you didn't do it. Four. Damn you, Greg. Fucking love you, dude. 65 bucks uh, fell as fair. I mean, they went through a bunch of shit. They got, I mean, you know, I could have done it later, but I'm not too worried about that shit. I got 60. Five bucks, you cheap mother. <laughs> oh, you five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Jay didn't fucking have five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you go to a store to only bring $60? It, 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 I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. How much money did you have on you? Nothing. Okay then. <laughs> so me having $60 was, was fantastic compared to you and that other idiot that was with us. How are we splitting these up? It don't include those, does it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, well I, I assumed yeah, I grabbed it. <laughs> I told you everything, man. Well, man. Dude. Thank you. No problem, dude. You gotta hook the friends up. That Don't be a little a, bitch. He gets 60 because that's all I got. So. Sounds familiar, it? Yeah, very familiar. Sounds like you actually agreeing on, on prices for things and you don't have the money for it. Then you look at me. I don't know what you're talking about. I can go to the ATM machine. I just don't want to. Actually, you know what? We're gonna go eat. You want lunch? You want Taco Bell? Sure. Just knock <laughs> the one down the road. <laughs> them. Where were, you, where were you at on that Ninja Turtles module? I don't know. Um, I have no clue what the value on that is. I don't either. I was going to give it to Richie. I think he still wanted it, but I'm not sure. Well, if he wants, if he wants to do that, uh, but I don't think me and him ever came up with the price on it. He's been he's been more than generous to me, so yeah, fucking save it for him. Oh, God. Well, there's the pieces. We spent three hours here. We got a bunch of shit, a bunch of shit we wanted. We got a a hell of a deal because Greg's the man. I had a blast. It's always fun when the guys come down. Always a blast. I um, found a bunch of shit I had no idea I even had. I'm happy with that score because we made out like some fat mother rats. He has it. Woohoo! Why does this jerk get a gift? Say. <laughs> what do you think of that? I, I appreciate that. He gave me this for free and a little Goomba. Which Billy threw on the floor, you jerk. 
So like, go chase and go. You should know that by now. You build a relationship, you build a rapport with, with dealers, store owners, whatever you want to call them, resellers, whatever the fuck. If you build a relationship, they're going to take care of you. Who the hell wants artillery and Spike's Peak double ender on 2600? Not a lot of people. So, I don't know where I'm going with this. They're good friends, so hook up friends when you can. Don't be a dick. God, son of a bitch. I almost fell and broke my my finger because it was in the crack, and then when I went over it was, nah, you don't care. Uh, what's a crap game? Let me see real quick. Slots. The telegame slots. Like, is anybody playing that? Like, who cares, right? I'll film, dude. No, I'll film. Wait, why are you going to film? You're... I have no clue what footage you're using. <laughs> okay, look, it's not any different from when Eric's around, so true. I don't see that's how true. the f that's a problem. So we're here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, visiting Alpha Omega Sin, and uh, one of his friends is actually kind of downsizing his video game collection. Is she in heat? Because I'd like to see her hump norm. I don't know. Now the great thing about Matty J is that he's he's straight up collector. Usually what that means is pretty good deals. You didn't seem to have a problem with it. I just asked why. <laughs> I know of Matty J. He has a very sizable collection. And what was the second part of that question? We're not the only ones who are gonna get to go through his stuff here. He's already sold some stuff off. Why you would wanna do that I don't freaking know, but he's doing it and has invited a bunch of collectors to his place. So we're gonna rummage through his stuff. There's gonna be farts. Okay, so I'm not selling this stuff. That's like the stuff I'm definitely gonna keep. And then this stack, my buddy wants, but he said like if there's something somebody really wanted, it'd be cool. Right off the bat, I am seeing something amazing that I would love to have. Up on his top shelf, he's got Mega Man all in the box. One of my collecting goals is to have all the Mega Man games, at least the ones on the NES and Super Nintendo, all in the box. But he's not selling them. Anything in this box I'm definitely selling. There's definitely like games I would like to keep. So Man J's not getting rid of everything. He's just downsizing just to keep the stuff that he likes, the stuff that he wants to play. Why are you uh, downsizing? So I went from trying to get everything to just like not realizing I'm not gonna complete the collection. I was eight games away from complete NES. So why are you stopping? Because that'd be like 10 grand for like eight stupid games. Me personally, I love having a wide range of games in my collection, even stuff that I barely even play because it's like I have, it's like having a library essentially. It's like having a little piece of history. So you're done collecting <laughs> basically. I'm not this. done no, collecting, no, no. but I'm done, I'm done completionist collecting for sure. Okay. I'm not looking for anything in particular, just something if it catches my eye. I mean, it's, if somebody's unloading their collection, they're probably gonna have some obscure stuff. So that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But yeah, I got rid of all like the real, real big stuff. Like I got rid of Flintstones, yeah. Panic. Bonks, Little Samson, they were all like the yeah. first to go. They all went to like the same guy. That would have been out of our price range right now anyways. I'm not necessarily looking for anything in particular here. I don't know what he has. I like being surprised. You know, I was kind of worried we'd come here and just get basically scraps, but luckily that's not the case. Something I noticed here immediately, and this is definitely going in my pay. I Kid Clown. <laughs> That's your bit. Why am I doing that? <laughs> I have a couple of regrets throughout the years with purchases I have not made, and Kid Clown was one of those. Kid Clown, I have seen once or twice at video game stores years and years ago. Yeah, so, uh, dude, like, do I get a bunch I love of fillers? All that shit. And that I'll blow I, my wad. I was actually playing uh, a lot recently. Alright. Where are you at on Kid Clown? Um. Probably like 40 bucks. That's in my maybe pile. Maybe pile? <laughs> Shouldn't it be a definite pile? That's $40 for freaking Kid Clown. <laughs> <laughs> um. You 
USSR. I mean, it's in my, my maybe gonna buy pile. You know, my maybe for sure. It's definitely one of the, okay, fine. You know what? Yeah, it's in a maybe pile. Cause you're just not sure. You gotta see what else is out there, right? Uh, what about Dark Man? So Dark Man was a really cool superhero movie that came out in 1990. And I actually didn't know this. They made an NES game based on the movie. I get this. You gonna get Dark Man? Yeah. So Alpha Omega Sin is looking for some recommendations here, and immediately one of the things that I see that I already have, which is awesome, is Power Blade. Has that like Darude Sin yeah, Power Blade soundtrack? Um, no. <laughs> you should get it. No. Power Blade still remains one of my favorite games on the NES. If I had to do a top 20, this game would definitely be on there. It's just, I mean, you go around and you you kill people with boomerangs, and you can like stage select. It's, it really kind of reminds me of like a Mega Man game. That's a really good game. Yeah. What are you charging on Power Blade? Uh, original Power Blade? Yeah. Like 10 bucks. Get it. If you don't, I'm gonna. What? Do you need it? I mean, if you, you need it, it. You picked it up first. I'm saying, I mean, if you need it. It's yours. As an adult, I'm, I'm, because of my mass library of games, I'm able to play stuff that I never even knew about. And Trog was one of those games. It was a later release. I'm gonna oh, you're a dinosaur. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a game. Okay, okay. and you basically go around collecting eggs. What did you want for and it's like a Pac-Man type of game. game. Okay. Um, and you got power-ups just like in Pac-Man. You like your dude and get big and go around and eat the cavemen. And the cavemen are trying to whack you with uh, clubs and roll f***ing wheels at you. And you can have fun with yourself. And it's actually a really great two-player game. If you have a second person with you, um, you guys kind of have to work together to a degree or, or challenge each other, unless you can get the highest score. Hidden gem for sure. Definitely a hidden gem on the NES. Here is a game that I do want a lot. Monster in My Pocket. Monster in My Pocket is one of the better co-op games on the NES. It's based on the toy line that came out in 89. Yes. Dude, this Great game's game. awesome. The few that aren't yeah. there are... I'm looking on the shelf and I find the game Wampum. Where you at on Wampum? Um, probably like 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Wampum is a platforming game and the levels are, are, are based on elements, fire, water, etc. And it's one of those games where after you beat a level, you get a new weapon, similar to Mega Man. But I'm not like gonna go eBay prices or anything like that. All right. So I'm seeing something here that's tickling my fancy just a little bit. Hey, hey, what are you asking about? Defenders of Dinatron City. I don't know much about this game, but it's always been one that I've kind of wanted to check out because, I mean, listen to the title. Defenders of Dynatron City. That sounds amazing. You're gonna get the wampum? Do you have it? I have it. Dude, yeah. I'll put it aside for yeah. you, because I know you've oh. been looking for it all weekend. Thanks, man. No problem. Yeah, I'll get this. Um. It's a smart buy. The Aladdin deck in, Aladdin deck, the Aladdin deck in hand, de damn, it seems seem like I'm, the Aladdin deck in hand, the Aladdin deck enhancer. Why can I not say that right? They marketed the Aladdin deck in they they marketed the Aladdin deck in I feel like I'm saying this wrong. The Aladdin deck enhancer is similar to the Super Game Boy cartridge attachment where basically you put the game, you put the cartridge inside the adapter and then you put that whole thing inside the NES. It was a device that got around the lockout chip. I'm, I'm oh, gonna need that one, the yeah. Dizzy, yeah. Yeah. or the Big Nose, yeah. sorry, and I have Good the rest idea. of them boxed. What it's supposed to do is basically allow you to play these NES games that weren't made like NES cartridges. That That's simple. It's not like a Game Genie where you throw it in and you have, you know, you plug in codes or anything like that. It doesn't give you any kind of competitive edge or anything. It just allows you to play these miniature games made for the NES. Hey, if you buy this device, you can buy our games, which are only $19.99. So they're $20 games. They're way cheaper than the retail NES games. So they were like, oh, if you buy this, you can buy cheaper games, you can save money. Um, unfortunately, I think only like seven games came out for it and it basically shut down Camerica as a company because it was a huge bust. Well, the Aladdin Deck Enhancer is a uh, apparatus that does kind of a harp, 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 harp. <sighs>
I have no idea. So I'm gonna just say 20 bucks, and I could okay. be like way low or way high, I don't know. But that's what I'm gonna say. I think a pretty good deal. This is, I guess you could call it a McDonald's game. We got McKids in the US, but this one we didn't get. It's a not, it's not a good game by any stretch of the imagination. I have played it before. If the price is right, I'm totally gonna get this. What are you asking it's like that? a typical space shmup. It's, uh, you can have it. it you gonna get that for your I can have it. I guess we're all in Donald land now, huh? Play some softball tonight. I'm yeah. in, baby. Let's do it, no nuts, because we don't have the show. I love softball. Japan only, this is women's softball on the Famicom. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> we, right, we don't have MLB the show, so we'll play softball on the Jeremy, Famicom. <laughs> so off here, there's this pile that, I don't know, it's ambiguous. Is it for sale? Is it not for sale? Like, my buddy's probably gonna get that stuff, mm -hmm. but he was also, he specifically said, if there's something in that pile that when they come over, if they really want. One of those things that I'm seeing is Squoon. It's a shooter for the NES, in a game that has always eluded me. Uh, I've never run across it in any flea market or s s I don't think I've even run into it to a store. He was very like, yeah, it's cool, they can... Because this is actually one I've been looking for. 20 bucks, the price is right. I'm gonna... <laughs> price is right. I'm gonna get it. It's, it's only $20. That's a freaking steal. 75 80 oh, yeah, I could pay for $90. So Matty J, he hooked it up today. Uh, everybody who went there got some really good stuff at really good prices. So we only spent $90 total here. I think a pretty good deal. We're able to scratch off a couple things off our list and Matty J made some money. He can go do what he needs to do with that. If I see a, a game, I buy it. You can all have a copy of this. Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. Ninja Gaiden wow. 2. Uh, Matty J actually gave us all a copy of Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Famicom. It was very nice of Matty J. Thank you, Matty J. I like, I like the name Matty J. It's better than Shady J. It was soft and gentle. Um, the caresses were nice. I can't even remember if there were, but I'm saying yes, there are farts because it's a given. This episode of Game Chasers is brought to you in part by LaunchBox, the perfect gaming front end for your PC, home theater, or arcade cabinet. Check out the app below. So we're just leaving an arcade auction that was an absolute disaster. Unfortunately, there are collectors here, there are people who own arcades here, and they got way deeper pockets than we do. So no arcades for us, uh, which, you know, whatever. This was a complete and absolute bust. What we're gonna do now is hit up some estate sales because it's way too late today to hit up flea markets. So we come across, well it's being advertised as an estate sale, but essentially it's a store in kind of a warehouse area and they're going out of business. It's, it's our cup of tea. There's VHS, there's records, and there's video games. There's PS2 games lined up on top of the shelf. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, well, this stuff's gotta go. So she says that the video games are 50 cents a piece, the VHSs are 25 cents a piece. I think a pretty good deal. I mean, 50 cents. Nothing is 50 cents these days. Bar, bar, bar. I think I will get me some uh, PS2 games if they're 50 cents. One of the games that we pick up is Thrillville. It's kind of a unique game, at least it is to me anyway. Um, you go and make your own theme park. So you get to make roller coasters and stuff and then you can ride them. Build your own theme parks, that's actually kinda cool. So we find out these games are 50 cents a piece. I'm gonna start looking myself, you know. For 50 cents I could afford a couple of games if I find something. I actually thought this was a really fun game. I actually played this on the original Xbox. It was just fun driving around. Same thing with GTA. I don't actually play for the missions and stuff. I just like to explore and go around and see what I can do. And uh, this was a game that I just remember having a lot of fun with. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I mean, for 50 cents, why not? That's a really good game. So I never played this game. I actually heard it was pretty good. I'm gonna make a lot of people angry when I say episode three is probably my favorite. 
Star Wars movie. Now we are the toy chasers as well, and I'm seeing a toy here that lights my fancy. Ah! Light bright, light bright. Turn on the magic of colored lights. Pop in the colored pegs and see Boofer, Ghostbusters, Potato Head Kids, dozens of your favorite characters, or create your own light pictures. Me and my grandmother and my sister, I'd go spend the night at her place, and I remember like. Yeah. A lot of times we. Yeah, and have, isn't it just like things, black yeah. paper that was behind there? Yeah, there was black paper and it had little numbers on it, and the numbers. Oh. I mean, not, excuse me, not numbers. Uh, Colors. Letters. letters. They had like B and. Okay. Yellow, uh, Y and stuff. All the. Oh no, colors, no, so. you're growing up now. You make up your own. Sh <laughs> no, I usually did. I would. Well, I draw penises. No, See. Not really. What's wrong with these guys? <laughs> I was amazed by this thing as a kid and have a lot of awesome memories with it. It's gonna be really cheap because pretty much everything in this shop has been cheap. Five bucks. Five bucks. All right. Five dollars for this is a no-brainer. I'm definitely gonna get this light bright. Uh, yeah, 86. So, Penises yeah. in the back, 10% uh, <laughs> off. Penises in the back, 10% off. Vinyl. I was never a vinyl guy growing up, but as I've gotten older, I don't really know how to put it. I love finding old records with like old nerd culture stuff on it. Star Wars records, Star Wars soundtracks, um, Pac-Man records, He-Man records. I like finding stuff like that. Uh, you know, so basically we just walked out of here with a bunch of random stuff. VHS tapes, video games, light brights, Dr. Seuss books, a couple of vinyl. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to be going to Retro Madness. Retro Madness is a video game slash toy store and they usually have an amazing stock of stuff. Retro Madness! that is. What's the story on this? I come across this game called Fireball. It's obviously a pirated cartridge. Um, my fascination with pirated cartridges is like, they, they technically don't exist. Um, they're not supposed to exist. What's the story on this? Oh, we got it in a lot and um, we tested it. We can't actually, we can't get it to work at all. Yeah? No idea. It's pretty sweet, pretty cool looking, but. So what's it worth to you? Uh, five bucks. Put that in my maybe, maybe right. pile. Yeah. This is kind of some third world country saying, you know what? That we want a piece of the pie too. We're going to make these bootleg cartridges. I don't even know what these are. So I'm seeing some random Famicom games here. I know a few of these didn't come out in the US, maybe all of them, who knows? I'm no expert. Pfft. I just chase the games down. I don't do history lessons on them. But one of these games is Devil World, and Devil World is actually one of the the, the better game. Miyamoto even designed the game. He created this game and it was never released in the US because it had biblical references in it. It's a good game. Um, and actually I have the Scandinavian copy, but I don't have the Famicom copy. And hey, if they're selling it for super cheap, I might as well get all these. Uh, that's cool just for the cover alone. Yeah, it is. About 10 for the three. Ooh. I like that. Stashed. Uh, yeah, dude. Oh yeah, that looks like There's some a bunch of uh, cases and um, there's actually some good stuff here. Here, grab that. Maybe pop? I have it. Oh, I don't need it. There is one system I'd love to have a complete collection of. That is Intellivision. And that's because Intellivision was one of the very first, if not the first, video game consoles I ever played. Uh, where are we at? Uh, this is the Thunder Castle. Um, Yes. Yeah. We got on that. One that's kind of uncommon is Thunder Castle, and I'm seeing it here in the box. I mean, I don't know what kind of game this is because I've never played it, never owned it, but it's an Intellivision game that I don't own, and so I'm intrigued by it. You have these priced at one point. Yeah. Good vibe on it, man. Yeah. I knew I had to have it. <laughs> yeah, some people would call it abduction, you know, others, 
call it something else, like, you know, maybe abduction or... Yeah, I know games are getting expensive. I feel like I'm paying your mom. I have dreamt about you. So good then. Yeah, 20 bucks. 20? Yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in that, that's a good price. Yeah, it is. Agreed. Nah, dude, this game is f***ing badass. F***ing love this game. Always have loved this game. Thank you, Suikoden, for making me blow my load. Just so I can say I have a hard copy. Your mom's got a hard copy. She does. When I come to a place like this, it's kind of hard to decide what to walk out with. Uh, toys or games. I like both. I don't know if I need this game. A Lupin? I mean, it's five bucks, so why not, right? If you don't get it, I will. It's because I never really see it. Fuck you. I'm, I'm getting it. Wow. Decided. Your mom's getting it. Yeah, you're Tonight, when I get home, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's my definitely pile. I have three different piles of obviously. Ah! Hey, you should switch his piles and confuse them. <laughs> How you doing on camera, Ruth? What happened? <laughs> Somebody messed up my stuff. I don't know what's what now. Oh! We're all at a label list, Mario Kart. You need to ask them. You need to ask questions, mother. Oh, yeah. Don't you? Oh my God! Dude, I'll do twenty on that. Label list, Mario Kart. Oh. Blanky. No, I can't do that. It's like, you know, it's like Zelda. I can do with that. Gotta get that. 25. Right yeah, I'm that's. Joking. I think that the past was this shit. I mean, it was a great game, fantastic soundtrack. What's cool about the Dongo picking up Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past is the fact that I get to talk about it here because otherwise, I mean, I already have the game, so we wouldn't pick it, be picking it up if it was just for me. So the. Link to the Past is freaking the best game ever. I would put it on my top three list of games of best games of all time for me personally. We see you, Norm. Yeah, gaming historian. Uh, punch out. Uh, let me look. Let me check. And Pokemon Stadium. Uh, I can do 15 on Stadium. Put it in the maybe. Put it in the maybe, maybe section. The maybe, maybe. maybe. There's the definite pile. So I'm definitely going to get that. But what it is, is I don't want to let these guys know that I'm definitely going to get a lot of shit. Wait, you have a maybe, maybe pile? So that, those are the games you maybe put on your maybe pile? No, look, this is the... Okay, look. Well, let me logically break it down for you. This is the all-in-general maybe, based on price and how much overall money. This is the definitely pile. And this is the maybe, maybe, based on what I kind of have. And which ones I'm gonna pick and choose if I need to. No, but why out. do you need two separate piles for your maybe? That's what I'm saying. Because one's a maybe, maybe. That's a maybe. So that's this, a maybe. That this is maybe. You, you might, maybes. you maybe put this on your maybe pile. Is that what you're saying? No. In other words, this is more than likely. It's a 50-50 chance. These are still up or up in the air. 25% chance based on price. See what I'm saying? 25, 50, 100% getting. So you want to get the arc? So you want it to go. Like over around like that. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. It's what I like to call the stowaway card, <laughs> which means I'm jumping on y'all's ship, <laughs> and with y'all's mass buys, I'm ultimately catching myself a better deal. That's the stowaway card. You know, you're stowing away on someone else's ship. You're saving. It's well like worth it. I've won dollars or something. I've wanted all those games for a while, anyways. Well worth it for me. So, give me that camera back. Probably a ton more stuff here that I could have picked up, but you know, you can't get everything you want. So I got my little stack here. Uh, it didn't come to a whole lot. Luckily, uh, Retro Madness is one of the better priced stores in the area. So we walked out pretty happy. Retro Madness is always a good. You, you guys pretty, <laughs> pretty much paid for my sh <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, thank you Game Chasers. Retro Madness, everyone. Feel the madness. That was the worst Randy Savage impersonation of all time. Video games. This stupid son of a bitch isn't even up. It's about 
6.30 in the morning, and the only reason I'm up this late is because I never went to bed. We have to, by necessity, start getting up earlier uh, if we still want to have decent stuff on the show. Come to my place early, come to my place early. I'll be up, we'll see about that, because I think he's asleep. I'm up. You expected me to be asleep, weren't you? You were asleep. Yeah, I was. Oh, I haven't been asleep yet. That is the only reason why he's at my place right now is because he stayed up the whole time. This is absolutely the, the, the worst collection of people that you want to get together if you want to wake up early in the morning. Uh, and the only one who, who normally wakes up early isn't even here. Yeah, and, and where, where is he anyway? Like, he's being secretive, like he's on some secret mission yeah, or something. Yeah, he wouldn't say anything to me either. I don't know where Jay is. Jay is like missing. He was very extremely cryptic uh, when I was grilling him about where he was. I really don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know what he's doing. I really don't care, but he's not gonna be with us. Maybe I was working, okay? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I had some business to attend to, oh. and maybe there's a slight possibility that I don't have to run everything I do by the three of you idiots. So just so we have somebody else to go on this trip, we're gonna go try to get to Dongo. I know it's silly, it's like seven in the morning, he ain't gonna get up, he ain't even gonna answer the door. The Dongo does not do mornings. Um, Billy, however, is half a step behind the Dongo in sorriness. He will not wake up to save his life. Um, I have to get up early in the morning, but on my days off, it's, it doesn't happen. So you could not ask for a sorrier group of people to wake up in the morning to go filming. Does this seem familiar? Familiar? This scenario. No, because he's answering. Get fucked. <laughs> Damn it. I'm supposed to do this today, that's right. Motherfucker. Literally within like a minute, Dodongo answers it. This does not happen. I do want to go out and look for video games, but I don't necessarily want to go out and look for video games. Oh my god, he looks like a, a fucking bomb. Yeah, he does. I need y'all to go away for a minute <laughs> so I can get some more sleep. Oh. Well, good morning, sunshine. Fuck off. Hey, we got an invasion of the body snatchers pod people shit going on right here, and this is not Dodongo. Or Dodongo's a new person, like figuratively. Maybe he's just changed. Yeah. Nope, still the dongo. Yeah, one time I woke up, there was a skunk hanging around, and I was just like, oh, get out of here, skunk. Another time, I'm not fucking with you, I was sleeping under the bridge in my spot over off of Mayfield, and fucking, uh, uh, Sherry, Mayfield Sherry. That's my fucking spot. I thought he was gonna say I was sleeping in the closet one time when he pushed out with the bridge. <laughs> there was a fucking snake cuddled up next to me. I'm not even fucking with you. I knew that Dodongo had, had been homeless at some point. Uh, I knew that he had lived in the forest for an extended period of time. I didn't know Dodongo was homeless. Um, I knew that he burned his bridges with pretty much everyone he knew though. Um, and he would just kind of bounce around from, from house to house. Essentially, it was I stayed in a field, I stayed in the forest, and I stayed under a bridge. So yeah. Oh, oh, what? Why, 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 why is that snortably funny to you, motherfucker? We're gonna go look at this spot one day. Oh, we can go there. We can go. Okay, okay let's go there. I'll show you exactly let's go where there the today. fuck it is. I'll eat a raw rat before I dig in the fucking trash, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I figured it'd be a great opportunity to head to uh, somebody who we know always has games, and that's Don. So as we pull up to the flea market, uh, first thing I kind of notice is that literally it looks like 20% of the vendors are actually here, and my hopes are, are not high. Three times we've come out, he hasn't been here, and he's been one of the most reliable and awesome sellers that we've encountered, so drove a long way to come out here. It was about an hour. One. You. So 
Ooh, VHS. Okay, at this point in time, I don't have really any... I think I've got $20. <laughs> Maybe. No, I don't even think I had that much. Actually, I borrowed $20 or $40. I'm gonna get a cigarette snuffer. I really need one. Came out and you didn't even bring a single dollar. I have not gotten paid. My boss is supposed to drop my check off this morning. That's what I was saying yesterday. It's you like, got $19 and change? Oh, oh my god. Because Billy has not seen it, so I bought this for Billy. The captain gets point break. Really never seen point break? I've never seen point break, no. I've not. Motherfucker. I'm confused because I'm tired. Because it's the morning. Do you know uh, Don's gonna be here? This is Don over here, and we haven't seen him in a month. Really? Yeah. yeah. Don's not here. He knows if we have any video games that we're that you're looking for. All right, I mean, Probably well, not. Go ahead and point us, point us the way. Don's will be there at the end, bro. All right, thanks, man. Hmm. Make sure the disc is in there. <laughs> okay, it's not in there. We got football, some football, some baseball. It's always nice when you run into somebody at the flea market that says, oh, yeah, we've met several times at Retro Palooza and I get all the games here. <laughs> One of the ladies that runs the flea market happened to notice that Dodonga was walking by with a damn 40 in his hand. Are you drinking alcohol? You damn straight I am. Would you like some? I'm not allowed to do that. Am I not allowed here? It is what it is. What can I say? I don't think you're allowed. Okay, all right. Open I'm, container thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, it could wait. Actually, yeah, you're right. You're right. It is. And the police station's right across the street. It's like 8 in the morning at this point. He's drinking a 40 out in public. <laughs> He's getting one last swig in. He's getting one last swig. Get out! Classic to Dongo, man. Does this mean you're an alcoholic if you're drinking this early in the morning? Damn straight I am. <laughs> oh, you bad boy. I know, it's, it's a problem. I am an alcoholic. Okay. I'm not a paralegal. No, you need to get some help with that. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably right, though. <laughs> I know I'm right. Probably, right? <laughs> She's probably right. It's actually kind of amusing to see this that a complete stranger is like, hey, you need to clean your act up. What are you doing, you know? Hey, police, I have a guy here named... Hey, I haven't been arrested here yet. Oh, not, <laughs> not, in, not in seven points? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to happen. Yeah, she said there's a first time for everything, exactly. honey. Well, apparently this is an intervention going on right now, other than the fact that Billy and Melvor aren't being too interventiony. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're more just, you know, kind of laughing. This is great. <laughs> I'm really serious. I know. So am I, Wanda. Because working in a bar, nobody likes to be around a drug. I got news for you. So I, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, I do, I install windows and doors. Really? Yeah. I tear the old ones out, put the new ones in. Well, you're like a remodel type person. Yeah, an independent contractor. I mean, I, I do a lot of remodeling. So that's where you get your money to buy your beer? My beer and my weed, yeah. Oh my God. I'm telling you, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> get out of here. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> I think at the time that this lady was talking to him, uh, in his mind, like she was probably turning into like a beer bottle, and that's what he was seeing. So, I don't, I don't think it helped at all. But if I ever were to have an intervention, I would want it to be that because it was pretty comical. This episode of Game Chasers is brought to you in part by LaunchBox, the perfect gaming front end for your PC, home theater, or arcade cabinet. Check out the app below. So it's been interesting, it's not been productive, but 
you got an intervention. So I'm an alcoholic. Thank you. You know, if a complete stranger sees that, then, you know, I don't feel bad for, for trying to tell him what he needs to do. I have nothing. <laughs> I was going to think of something funny, but I can't because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Anyway, there's another flea market close. We've been there plenty of times, been on video plenty of times, but I know that they have games. I cut my hair because of lice. I told you that already. <laughs> All right? Was it a log or was it mud butt? Because sometimes after a night of drinking, I get mud butt. I need Knights of the Old Republic. I doubt it's gonna be here. I'm on the lookout for Xbox games. I don't know why, but I've gotten a hankering to, to, to get an original Xbox and get uh, some games for it. How much are your Xbox games? $5. Okay. And I'm assuming PlayStation 2 is $5? $5. There's a whole bunch back here in these boxes, this whole wall full. Uh, I've got, uh, these are five. The NES is five. Uh, PS3s are 15 or two for 25. Okay. He's got a ton of Xbox games here. Hopefully he'll have Knights of the Old Republic. That's a really good game. So another game that I'm seeing here on Xbox that everybody raves about is Fable. Have you never played it? I've never had an Xbox. Fable's a shit, first of all. I don't, man. I, I'm such an Xbox noob. Just not a system that I touch, so I don't know anything about Fable. It's a great fucking series. It was one of the one of the first games that, based on what you decided to do, it would alter your character's appearance, um, how everybody perceived you in town. Like if you would run around like slapping hoes and shit like that. All right, I'll get Fable. I'll put that on my baby call. That's a good one. Got that? Oh no! Oh. oh. This game is my jam. One of my top favorite games on the, in, on the, I almost said 64, on the GameCube, uh, Rogue Leader. Really just with Rogue Leader, it's just, I remember it being a really good game. I, I've always been uh, partial to piloting games. I was really excited when this came out. Um, and it was a great game. It was a great improvement on that original 64 game. And uh, it was one that I really had a lot of fun playing. That's a really good game. I'm a badass pilot, dude. I can do a barrel roll at Star Fox 64. Love the Rogue Leader on 64, really love the one on GameCube, part two and three. Like eventually I'm gonna get my pilot's license. That's, that's my goal in life is to get my pilot's license. Ah! Have you said GameCube's five too? Five dollars. Even the Sega Genesis is still in the original box, all five dollars piece. And for five bucks, you'd be stupid. You'd have to be the biggest idiot on the planet not to get it. Me personally, even though I may be getting ripped off, personally, I'm not getting ripped off because it's going to be worth the five bucks for me. Seems like he's got some, some N64 games in that actually aren't crap, uh, like Wave Race. I do have an N64. Do you have one. Wave Race? I don't, but I don't like that game. You don't? No. Wave Race fucking sucks. It's a fucking game. The controls are fucking bullshit. And it's just a fucking all around turd. I didn't purchase my Wave Race back in the day. You know how I got it? Uh, I was walking to my grandmother's house and I went cut through the alley. We called it Danger Alley because there were demon dogs in there. That was the, that was the legend anyway. But it was just sitting there in the middle of the alley. Wave Race. Kind of thought for a second that since it was in Danger Alley, it could be haunted and it was a trap. Huh. Oh, what game. about the pod racing game? Do you have that one? I do have that one. I actually, uh, that one came from my PS4. So I've got like a PS4 digital copy. I can play any time I want to, and I never do. So he says he has Atari games in here, and man, that's right up my alley. So it's Atari games, and Atari. he said that there might be more. I think I remember going through this very box at one point with Jay. So this looks like the same box we sifted through like two years ago, honestly. Hopefully he's got some new stuff in here. Go Damn. ahead, start digging. I am, but I'm, I'm almost just like, because I'm not sure what, dude, you gotta understand, I had a whole, I got a whole trash bag full of games that somebody gave me, Atari games, and they're old Atari games. 
shit like that at one point in time. But Chris, my Chris, my drummer, he's got them. I have so many Atari games, so many Atari games, uh, and I have all the ones that are in here actually right now. He said he still got them. I mean, they're mine technically. You know Does he have I mean? any old games he wants to get rid of? If they are, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> And to be quite honest, it would have to really jump out at me and say, buy me. It'd have to be something kind of obscure. Because honestly, at $5 a piece, which is what he's charging on these, these are all dollar games. These are all the super common ones that should be a dollar. So we got a nameless cartridge. I remember playing combat on the Atari, which I called tanks. And I remember E.T. But the funny thing about E.T. is my friend Jordan Downs, he can beat it and he cannot explain how he beats it. You come over here, you go up one screen, you go left two screens, you jump in this pit, you raise his head up, and you get out of the pit, you move up, you move right, a couple times you jump in this other pit, and then biggity bam, the motherfuckers beat. <laughs> and I'm just like, how did you figure this out? He said, I played E.T. for hundreds of hours. And I was just like, my God, what a waste of your time. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. What? Is that Exile? Yeah. I'm not too familiar with the Myst series. I have a couple of games, like on PS1 and Saturn. Oh, I gotta get it. Well, I mean, the, the reason the whole Myst series was intriguing to me is the whole puzzle-solving aspect of everything. You know what I mean? Because that's kind of what it is whenever you get super drunk every night. You gotta wake up and figure out what the f*** you did the night before. It's, it's, you're not a person. It's, well, it, it's more like imagine yourself being thrown on a fucking desert island with all this technology around you and nothing's working. So you have to go in and figure out how the f to turn everything on. So the Wii games are one for ten or two for fifteen. I know. Uh, so there's this Wii U game, Mario 3D Land. Um, I kind of really wanted to play this when it came out, I just didn't have the money and have kind of forgot about it. It's sitting here and um, if they bundle it with something else, we'd be getting this game for like, like what, $7.50? That's an amazing price for a Wii U game. Billy wants to get Klonoa on the Wii, so that's the bundle for me. I get my game for $7.50 and I'm happy. I could care less about the rest of these fools. It's actually one of the Mario 3D World for five bucks, basically. And even better, Billy's paying for it. D -d 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 Don't dust your hands off like you got something over on me. Well, I just I just keep looking at that fucking Genesis collection is all. Well. So like, this is. Um, do you want the Genesis collection? I want this game for two reasons. Um, the first reason is because it has a lot of sh a lot of badass fucking games on it. You know, games that we would play growing up and whatnot. Although Altered Beast fucking sucks, y'all. I know you're gonna get some shit for that. But Altered Beast is a fucking bullshit game. That's a really good game. And on top of that, uh, I ended up getting Rufus's copy of this game stolen. So I owe Rufus uh, a copy of this game, so that's why I got it. This is actually good. Like, I have it. It's like, oh, it's really good. Uh, Billy, <laughs> the game chasing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so did we reach the sixth game, get a discount? Uh, well, give me a discount at uh, the Wii's here at two for 15. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We're getting a lot of stuff here. It's a bulk deal. It's a bulk, a lot of, lot of stuff. Buying a lot of stuff. This is normally 15, so that would be 30, 15 would be 45. Uh, 40 bucks for all of them. That was, yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. So he took $5 off the $45 total and said 40 bucks, which is awesome because actually that is what I had in my head and I happen to have two 20s. I'll take this coin from your hand, I promise you. Well, I'm a floating head, huh? So this booth has something interesting that I like a whole bunch. For whatever reason, I have this ability to, to, to purchase board games that are based off television shows. I have Mork and Mindy and Laverne and Shirley and Mask and oh, 
really things that shouldn't exist. You're in charge. Yes. Uh, are you firm it. on this? Huh? Are you firm on the twelve dollars on this? Uh, ten. Ten. Yeah. I want to see Billy act stupid. What if What if he gives you his best Fonzie impersonation? Will you give him a dollar off? Fonzie, yes. Yeah. Oh, so nine if I give you a Ponzi impersonation? Yeah, a dollar off. Do it, Billy. Do it. Um, so I throw this out here uh, just to kind of put Billy on the spot and make him look like an idiot in public. And he does. Wait, first, I mean, do you have like something that's not working? Like a, like a, like a jukebox? I could just hit it? <laughs> make, make it work. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> hey! That'll <Yeah>, work. <laughs> that right. work. Okay. That was right. terrible, dude. <laughs> that was bad. You have the worst Fonz impression. <laughs> you couldn't even give it like a 100% Hey, you're just like, oh, it's, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what it sounded like? It sounded, oh. Most of his impersonations end up sounding like Watto. Um, he can do a pretty decent Herman Munster. Oh, oh yeah, because that one was really bad. Um, Willie, Willie. <laughs> Herman Munster impression wasn't bad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. It was like, duh. <laughs> We've arrived at a booth here that specializes in games. At a flea market, which is usually not a good sign, he's got something here that's pretty obscure, pretty uncommon. It's the Super Stick wireless joystick for the NES. Number one bet, it's got no wires, it's a one to get. Arcade action is where you'll be. Supersonic will set you free. No wires. 15 is just, it. Would you do 10 on this? Um, 12 bucks and it's yours. Too much for me, personally, uh, but I'm thinking about it. And then the dongo jumps in, wanting to bundle. Would you do 20 for the joystick and the Rebel Assault? I've never played Rebel Assault, but I remember stupid Billy and Melvor arguing about it one time uh, with the case and the game. Dodongo sees the game, and I think he wants it because, because of the whole spat that we had in the very first episode of The Game Chasers, uh, where I found the thing, and Billy was trying to be conniving and say, oh, let me see it wasn't having any of that because Billy's shady and I knew he was going to take it and buy it for himself. I'll do 21, winner, winner, chicken dinner. 21? 21. Deal. All right. All right. Deal. Tactic from the game chasers, uh, you know, you got to bundle it up sometimes. Didn't find uh, um, anything super, super, super exciting, but I did find some stuff that is kind of cool. So at this point in time, I'm ready to head back home because I got some more beer drinking to do and I got to test these games out. Nadongo was talking about how he used to live under a bridge. I want to go see this bridge that he used to live under. I really don't have any choice because Billy's driving, so to the bridge we go. And go ahead and park. Right there. All right, bitches, I'll show you my fucking bridge. I said, God, this is fucking old memories right here. I haven't slept under this bridge in fucking over 10 years. I kind of want to go home more than anything else. I think this is something that uh, is striking Billy's fancy a little more than mine. It's kind of funny because I said, dude, you've burned your bridges with everybody, and then he literally have to, had to, to sleep under one. <laughs> It's true though. <laughs> it is true, it's true. What can I say? I'm a little bit curious just to see if, at this point in time, if any of my artwork is still there. I did three months in the field, one month on the bridge. The field? Yeah. So there's been a forest, a field, and a bridge. A forest, a field, a bridge. I've been homeless three times in my life, okay? <laughs> This is my old home.
Some of my artwork is still here. Some of it, a lot of it isn't. Oh, holy sh I wasn't expecting to uh, to be as attached to it as I was when we got there. Other than the cars passing by, it's actually a good spot. I mean, it's a fucking great spot if you're homeless. It's concrete, it's a bridge, it's not gonna change. You know, like the apartment from Troll, berry, berry, bop, berry, berry, bop. What's going through my head, how I used to count the cars that went by. Dun dun, dun dun, dun dun. Everything's just kind of coming back to me. It's almost like I've been there the whole time. Whatever the f you're dealing with and going through, somebody's got it worse. Somebody's got it a million times worse. You hear the cars, you know, going overhead, and you think to yourself, damn, it must be nice to have somewhere to go, uh, and something to eat, and somewhere warm to sleep, and shit like that. The field wasn't enough, the woods weren't enough. The bridge is what broke me. And then you gotta realize, okay, that was then. You've made it a point to get past that. You have to stay strong and you have to be past that. You know what I mean? Settling is the disease for contentment. When you're content, you stop. You stop moving forward, you stop progressing. I think this was a hard experience for Dodongo. I think this was a turning point in his life. I really do, because he, um, I think that was him at a low point. Don't give up, never give up. When you give up, that's when you lose. That's when you stay homeless. It applies to everyone. I don't give who you are. You don't stop, you don't quit, you don't can't give up. If a person learns a lesson after such ordeals, then I think it's an experience that, that it really is worth it. I always thought I was gonna do something with myself. I always thought I was gonna change the world growing up, you know what I mean? Whether it be through music or whatever. We don't always have the ability to change the world. Just to change ourselves. And sometimes it takes sleeping under a bridge to figure that out. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad I had fucking treated Melvor and Jay and everybody else, moms and like everybody, literally. I think I needed to see this place one last time. One last time. This is good for me, actually. Very therapeutic. <laughs> like Johnson's and Johnson's. <laughs> Yeah, let's get it. It's not good to sacrifice people to do things your way. The Dodongo is a better person. Dodongo is not perfect by any means, but Dodongo is a better person than he was 10, 15, 20 years ago, for sure. Oh my God, what's worse, bridge or game chasers? Fucking game chasers. At least under a bridge I could sleep. <laughs> Matter of fact, one time he tried to get me to be a morning person when he, whenever we had our own apartment at 15. I was 15. We called it the Happy Hatfield Hotel. And um, I wouldn't wake up and go to school. As a matter of fact, I would show up and I would go to uh, lunch. But no, one time Melvor, he was just like, get up, go to school. I told him, fuck you. <laughs> so he, had... <laughs> this is actually true though. <laughs> so he attacked me. 